What's going on, world? Yo, today is Friday. Today is Friday. You guys already know the deal. You guys already know what we're doing. We're doing NCLEX questions, y'all. We're doing NCLEX questions. I just want to, hey, I know I already know a bunch of people about to come in here and tell me that they passed their NCLEX this week or that they got finished with finals or they got finished with whatever. So if you guys are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are about to do NCLEX questions. All right. But of course, you guys already know the deal. If you guys are new here, welcome. I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at, your nursing journey. Make sure you guys smash that like button. Make sure you guys share. Make sure you guys follow. As soon as we get 100 people up in here, I'm going to turn this camera around. But I mean, I know y'all like to look at me. Some of y'all are weird, but that's all right, because we're going to turn the camera around and we're going to get it popping. All right. So I need to know I'm here. I'm here at the beginning. Camille, that's what I'm talking about. Hey, so you already know what to do. You already know what to do. Get it out there. Get it out there. I'm about to. I gotta get this stopwatch going real quick, and then uh, yeah. How's every, how was everybody's week? I know I didn't. I didn't do some stuff the last couple of days. Had you know, I had to be an adult. You know, a parent slash adult. So how we doing? How we doing up in here? How are we doing? All right. Like I said, make sure you guys share. Make sure you guys like. Make sure you guys follow. Smash that like button, y'all. Smash that like button. Hey, we're trying to get a hundred people up in here. It says don't argue uh, when he has a white. But look, you see that. That's my brain down on paper. That's what I call it. Christy, uh, ATL, uh, uh, by my way of New Orleans, starting over from the beginning. That's what I'm talking about, Christy. Hey, what, how does it go? Denay, uh, uh, delayed, never denied. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to you for being up in here. Shout out to all 95 of y'all up in here. You already know what the deal. Hey, if I sound kind of congested and puffy, you already know what's up. It's these allergies. I live in San Antonio. They nasty out here. Hey, so real quick, y'all like that little banner though? You know what I'm saying? You know, hey, shout out to the artist. You know what I'm saying? What's up, Steph? Uh, hey, so we're about to do NCLEX questions. Y'all, we do NCLEX questions every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 530. Sorry if you guys can't see that. I have no idea why it's so bright. Make sure you guys smash that like button. Make sure you guys share, follow. Also, don't troll my chat. You troll my chat. I'm going to ban you. Uh, what else? What else? I got these questions off nurseslabs.com. So if you guys want to go over there and check those questions out for yourself, you guys are more than welcome to go over there and check those out for yourself. All right. What's up, Steph? Uh, it said, yeah, you made it. That's right. Here we go, y'all. Question number one. After cardiac surgery, a client's blood pressure measures 126 over 80. Nurse Katrina uh, determines that the mean arterial pressure is which of the following? Is it 46, 80, 95, or 90 millimeters of mercury? What are we thinking, y'all? What are we thinking? Hey, make sure you guys smash that like button. Make sure you guys share. Make sure you guys follow. I got these questions off nurseslabs.com. Free sets of questions, y'all. Free sets of questions. Yes, Heather, you already know the deal. You already know the deal. Hey, by the way, you get a calculator on the exam, y'all. You know, you get the little clickety, clickety, little clickety thingy that you get on the computer, yo. You know what I'm saying? You ain't get no TI-84s or whatever they call them now, you know. So, also, if you're new here, I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey. Hey, don't be selfish your whole life, all right? Don't be greedy. Hey, share the, hey if you are still in nursing school right now, I don't care if you are finished with the semester. You need to share this to your cohort, all right? Share, even if you don't like them, all right? Because I might like them. <laughs> so here we go, y'all. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is C, 95 millimeters of mercury. So using the following formula, you want to calculate the map. To get the map, you want the systolic plus two of the diastolic, right? And then you want, uh, what does that equal? 126 plus two. Oh, I'm sorry. The systolic blood pressure is 126. So it's two times the 80. Then you got 280, uh, 286, which gets you to 95, all right? That's reduction of risk potential. That is not the top ones, but it's like 9 to 15% on the NCLEX. Let me put y'all on the timer because y'all take too long. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Here we go. Real quick, real quick. Question number two. A, fa a female client arrives at the emergency department with chest and stomach pain and a report of Black tarry stool for several months. Which of the following orders should Nurse Oliver anticipate? Is it a cardiac monitor, oxygen, a creatinine? Uh, was it a, the the creatinine uh, kinase and la uh, lactate uh, dihydrogenase levels? Is it the prothrombin time, partial thrombin time, or partial thromboplastin time? Sorry, uh, fibrinogen or fibrin or and fibrin split uh, product value? Is it the ECG complete blood count? Uh, octal blood or testing of the octal blood and a comprehensive serum metabolic panel or is it the electroencephal and encephalogram uh, or the alkaline phosphatates uh, aspartate uh, amino transfer levels or basic serum metabolic panel lord that is a mouthful what are we thinking y'all what are we thinking i'll give y'all a lot longer than it took for me to read that question. Hey, if you guys are new here, welcome. Yeah, that's a Camille. That's it's a mouthful. I'm trying to tell you, Cass, you graduated. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Shout
Shout out to Cass. Hey, shout out to everybody. Occult. Hey, it's pronounced Occult. Well, I pronounced it like a 10-year-old getting ready for a spelling bee. Nine times out of ten, that's said better than me anyway. So, oops. Y'all should go see uh, Homegirl series on uh, nurse nurse pronouncing, you know, medications and words wrong because no one cares. Helen Keller here. Yep, straight up to you. Hear no evil, see no evil. Here we go. Here's our answer, y'all. Here is our and You pronounce half of them wrong, but same. Yep, I did. You, I, I, look, I, will, I will be the first to admit that I legit will don't say them right because no one cares. <laughs> as long as you understand it, you know what it looks like and it's familiar, you know the answer. That's all that matters. Here we go. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer, oops. And the answer is C, right? The electrocardiogram uh, evaluates the complaint of chest pain. Laboratory values determine anemia. And the stool test for octal blood determines uh, blood in the stool. That's physiological adaptation, all right? That is the third largest section on the NCLEX exam, y'all, at 11 to 17%. Yep, upper GI bleed. The one that would have, the, the, the key of that would have been what? Black tarry stool, right? Look. TGI Friday, you already, you already know what's up. You already know what the deal is, all right? I appreciate everybody being here. Here we go. Question number three. Olivia has coronary artery bypass graft surgery three days ago. Which of the following conditions is suspected by the nurse when a decrease in platelet count from three or two, uh, 230 to 5,000 is noted? Hmm. Mm, mm, mm. What are we thinking, y'all? Thank you for the rose. Thank you for TGI Friday. I didn't even know they had those little emojis there. Hey, but shout out to Kevin, 05117A. He passes NCLEX, y'all. I need all 200 of y'all to show him some love. Give him his flowers. Kevin, welcome to the greatest shit show on earth, my brother. And uh, if you could give one piece of advice out to everybody out here, what would it be in regards to the NCLEX, okay? What are we thinking, y'all? What are we thinking? Hey, make sure you guys smash that like button. Make sure you guys share. Make sure you guys follow. Also, I want to know who you are, where you're from, and where you are at in your nursing journey. All right, I got some C's, I got some D's. Uh, read, every, read every question carefully, yeah, there you go. Got D, okay. All right, y'all, come on with the answer. Here's our answer, here is our answer. Oh, you passed on Tuesday? Okay, just Jeezy, that's what I'm talking about. Hey, you already know the deal. Give Jeezy her, hey, give Jeezy her flowers right now. Give her her flowers, right? So we have our heparin-associated thrombosis and thrombocytopenia, right? That answer is D. It may occur after a cabbage dur uh, due to the heparin used during the surgery, okay? So shout out to everybody that got that question right. Hey, guys, remember, when you guys are studying for NCLEX, you need your you need content, you need questions and answers, and you need rationales. You need those three. There are no tricks to taking this exam. The only trick is if you want to say it's a trick, it's called putting in the work. That's all it is, all right? Here we go. Question number four. Question number four. Which of the following drugs would be ordered by the physician to improve the platelet count in a male with uh, idiopathic thrombocytopenic uh, purpura or ITP? Is it your uh, ASS? Your uh, is it uh, corticoid? Uh, cortic oh my oh my god cortico corticosteroids oh my god methotrexate or vitamin K? See. Hey, I've been I've been talking all day, so this is the last bit of talking I'm gonna be doing today. So I'm a little your boy's a little winded. I just graduated nursing school, studied for the NCLEX. Shout out to you, Kyle. Shout out to you, Kyle. All right, y'all. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? Hey, we're trying to get to 10,000 likes, y'all. 10,000 likes. Hey, get carpal tunnel for me. Get carpal tunnel for me. Make it happen. Make it happen. All right, y'all. Here we go. We got D. We got A. We got D. Lay, you graduated in five days. Shout out to you. Hey, right around the corner. Right around the corner next week. Here we go in three, two. And the answer is B, corticosteroids. Corticosteroid therapy can decrease antibody production and uh, was it uh, the phagocytosis of the antibody coated platelets, uh, remaining more functioning or re retaining more functioning platelets. That is pharmacological and paratero therapy. Second largest section on the NCLEX exam at 14 to 18 percent. Damn, Sarah, Sarah, you already know the deal. You already know what's up. Finals is this week. Or finals week, then finally done. I know that's right, Anna. I know that's right. So here we go, y'all. Hey, so make sure a hey, pharmacology, management of care, physiological adaptation, three largest sections on the NCLEX exam, okay? Here we go. Question number five. A female client is scheduled to receive a heart valve replacement with a, a porking valve or porkine valve, however you want to say it. Which of the following types of transplants is this? Is it the allo, allogenetic? Allogenetic, genetic, oh my God, uh, auto, autologous, is this the, the syngenic or the xenogenic? Material. Uh, did you say this was, what? What material did you say this is? Farm? No, this is a comprehensive. So I got these questions off nurseslabs.com, nurseslabs.com. Hey, if you're a nursing student and you need care plans, hey, they're good too. They have good, they have good um, 
care plan stuff over there for you. But they're free sets of questions. Uh, this is a comprehensive exam, so this is a mixture. So each one will have a different category based off of uh, the eight sections of the client needs for the NCLEX, okay? And hey, if you don't know, that's okay. I would rather you answer, you have a 25% chance of getting it right if you guess and not apply and apply what you know versus trying to not uh, to apply what you don't know and then not or not answer it at all all right here we go y'all here's our answer here's our answer in three two thank you for the mm, thank you for the snaps with the geno uh the xenogenic right xenogenic transplant is between a human and another species that is a reduction of risk potential nine to fifteen percent on the NCLEX exam, ladies and gentlemen. Zebo, Zeno, Zebo, whatevs. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to you, Amber. I see you out there. Here we go. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Hey, real quick. Hey, y'all. I, hey, I have a free download over there at thebootnurse.com slash test. Go over there, 42 pages, and, you know, like, little quick uh, tips, how many questions, you know, like, trigger words, all that good jazz. You guys go over there and check that. Link is also in my bio, and it says free download. Also, check that out, thebootnurse.com slash test. You guys can go over there and see that for yourself, okay? Here we go. Question number six. Marco falls off his bike and injures his ankle. Which of the following actions should the initial response to the injury uh, in the ex, uh, extrinsic pathway, all right? Is it the release of calcium, the release of tissue, a uh, thromboplastin? Is a conversion of factor, what is that? Factor 12 to factor 12A or conversion of factor 8 to factor 8A? What are we thinking? We got Bs, we got Bs. Shout out to all 250 y'all in here rocking with me, man. Hey, may, hey, we're on the road to 10,000 likes. Hey, 10,000 likes. Make sure you guys smash that like button. Make sure you guys share. Make sure you guys follow, okay? I got these questions off nurseslabs.com. Do not be greedy your whole life. Make sure you guys share this out with people, okay? Make sure you guys let them know that we do these every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Also, if you're new here, I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey, all right? Hey, a little note. Hey, something a little about me. I failed my NCLEX three times, y'all. Three. Failed it three times, been a nurse for three and a half years. I've worked ICU. I worked in three different ICUs, a burn center, a burn ICU, a medical and a neuro. I worked in a PACU and I also worked in the OR. So I'm just letting y'all know. I know all these answers. Good. That's why it's called a review. So I'm glad you know them all. I'm glad you know them all. You know what I'm saying? Here we go. Here we hey, go. Here's our answer. Our answer is B, release of tissue thromboplastin. Tissue thromboplastin is released when damaged tissue comes in uh, contact with clotting Factors, all right. Physiological adaptation, third largest section on the NCLEX exam, y'all, at a, uh, 11 to 17 percent. Appreciate all the follows. Y'all are following so much, like I can't even keep up with y'all. So, uh, who said it? Hey, I'm just saying, if you know all the answers, I'm glad you know. That's why it's called a review. You ain't supposed. To, you're not supposed to know everything. You know what I'm saying? And if you start to know everything, they're going to start throwing harder questions out, out, out at y'all. So just realize that, you know, I just finished my first semester. Shout out to you is Arcadia. Question seven instructions for a client with lupus would include information about which of the following uh, blood uh, disc, discrasius. Is it a uh, Dressler's syndrome, polycystemia, essential uh, thrombocytopenia or von Wilbrin's disease? What are we thinking? Shout out to all 365 of y'all. Hey, we're on the road to 10,000 10, likes, y'all. Smash that like button. Share. Follow. You know what I'm saying? Hey, those, that's the trifecta that I need and that TikTok needs to get folks here. You know what I'm saying? Don't be greedy. Don't be greedy. Uh, another little thing about me. I've been in the Navy for 16 years. Um, I've had two deployments. Uh, the Navy's cool. If you decide that you want to do military nursing, that's a really good way to go about it as well. Always an option for you to pay for stuff and, you know, to still get your, you know, to get your learn on. You know what I'm saying? So here we go. Here we go, y'all. Here's our answer. Here is our answer in three, two. And the answer is C. Essential thrombocytopenia is linked to amino, immunologic disorders such as lupus and the human uh, immunodeficiency virus. That is part of physiological adaptation, y'all. It is what? The third largest section of what? The NCLEX? Yup, sure is. Uh, there it is. Just finished my first semester, LPN RN. Love the content. Is it Ratchet Responder? First of all, your name is Ratchet. You know what? I ain't even going to hate you for your name being Ratchet Responder. But, hey, I appreciate it. I'm glad you think. I'm glad that you find this helpful. Uh, this is the best teacher on TikTok. He don't play. He get down. Hey, Kevin. Let, hey, first of all, Kevin, your name is already Kevin, so you already know I rock with you. Second thing is, like, hey, don't come to my chat and don't come over here and tell me how to teach. Because if that would be the case, you would be teaching yourself. You know what I'm saying? I'll put you outside. And, and I'll come talk. I'll come talk to you later. <laughs> Here we go. Question number eight, y'all. Question number eight. The nurse is aware that the following symptom is most commonly 
an early indication of stage one Hodgkin's disease. Is it pericarditis, night sweats, uh, uh, splenomegaly, or persistent hypothermia? What are we thinking, y'all? What are we thinking? Shout out to all y'all. 400 y'all in here rocking with me. You already know what the deal is. Hey, I'm started, I was doing questions every day, but I realized that, you know, that probably didn't do well for people because I'm pretty sure, you know, you get a, hey, I understand what it's like to get study overload. So I'm going back to the three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 530. You guys will start seeing it. All right. So make sure you guys participate. Make sure you guys smash that like button. Make sure you guys share. I mean, Ta is it uh, Tala? You're in your first semester. OK, I graduate next Friday. So excited. I know that's right, Kayla. John, did you say E, sir? Sir, don't do that. Don't do don't don't do me like that. Are you saying E as in all the above? Come on, guy. Uh, and the answer is B for night sweats. In stage one, in stage one, symptoms include a single enlarged lymph node, usually unexplained fever, night sweats, malaise, or generalized uh, uh, par paritis or paritis, uh, which is the reduction of risk potential nine to fifteen percent on the NCLEX exam. All right, you just graduated yesterday. Hey, lady, hails. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, one step closer. One step closer. Okay, here we go. Question number nine. Francis with leukemia has neutropenia. Go figure, right? Which of the following functions must be frequently assessed? Is it her blood pressure? Uh, or Francis could be a guy. Is it their blood pressure? Uh, is it bowel sounds, heart sounds, or breath sounds? What are we thinking? My final exam is Monday. That sucks to have a final exam on Monday. <laughs> Especially like, man, I got the weekend to think about this. You know what I mean? Shout out to all 500 plus of y'all in here rocking with me. We're doing NCLEX questions. I got them off nurseslabs.com. These are both for RNs and LPNs. They're free sets of questions. Go over there and check them out for yourself. Make sure you guys share. Make sure you guys follow. Give me all them likes. Hey, we need 10,000 likes, y'all. 10,000 likes. Make it happen. Airway, okay. I'm going to give y'all 10 more seconds. 10 more seconds. I take my NCLEX PN on Tuesday. Cool. All right, so I better not see you on Monday inside of my live then. Hey, I just want to let y'all know, if you take NCLEX the day before and you're in my live, I'll ban you because you don't need to be in here. All you're going to do is to continuously stress yourself out and cramming didn't do nothing for nobody. All right. A or D. You got to give me one. All right. Here we go. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is D. Breath sounds. Pneumonia, both viral and fungal, is a common cause of death in clients with neutropenia. So frequent assessment of respiratory rate and breath sounds is required. There's a reduction of risk potential. Reduction of risk potential. Lord, man, it says love your energy. I've only been here for five minutes. Thank you. Look, hey, we do this every day. I mean, the energy is there every day. But, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you know, you get this same energy. I'm all about it. All right. So I appreciate you being here. Hey, question number 10. The nurse knows that the neurologic uh, complication of multiple myeloma uh, usually involves which of the following body systems? Is it the brain, muscle spasm, uh, renal dysfunction, or myocardial uh, irritability? Sorry, irritability. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? Shout out to all 500 plus y'all. Hey, I want to. If you're new here, I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey. And also, if you're not a nurse or on that nursing journey, what you doing here? What you doing here? Hanging out with us? You know what I'm saying? What we doing? What we doing? I'll give y'all 15 seconds. Had to come tell you I passed my NCLEX on Tuesday. Your your questions every day help me. That's what I'm talking about. Who said that? Let me see that name real quick. Is it a uh, Miss Leah? Miss, hey, hey, you already know what to do. You already know what to do, Miss Leah. Hey, pass NCLEX on Tuesday. Give Miss Le give Miss Leah her flowers. Let her know what's up. I'm new from San Antonio. Shout out to you, Crystal. I live in San Antonio. You know what I'm saying? You live in Texas. I take my NCLEX on Friday. Okay. Shout out to y'all. Shout out to y'all. I'm in Ohio. Okay. This renal dysfunction, okay, Louisiana, oh, Louisville, I'm sorry, not Louisiana, obviously, Kevin don't know how to read, right, here we go, y'all, here's our answer in three, two, Oklahoma, ill, go horns, anyways, uh, <laughs> and the answer is B, back spasm, a back pain and paresthesia in the lower extremities may indicate uh, 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 impending spinal cord compression from a, a spinal tumor, this should be recognized and treated promptly as progression of the tumor, may result in paraplegia, right? Which is physiological adaptation, right? Third largest section on the NCLEX exam at 11 to 17%. Is it Yarlin? Shout out to you, Florida. Go dogs. ill. I mean, hey, you know, shout out to you. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I lived in Florida. Shout out to Duval. Hey, I got any folks out there that's in the Duval, you know, Duval County? So, hey, real quick. Hey, I got a victory guide out there, y'all. Hey, over 780 pages, 780 pages. You can check that out over at thebootnurse.com slash victory. And it's also in the link uh, in my bio up here. Y'all can go over there and check that out, okay? Um, 
Duval, <laughs> hey, it's wild out there. Hey, I used to live over there close to 103rd, so you already know it's hey, that, that Walmart we don't go to. You know what I'm saying? Question number 11. Nurse Patricia is aware that the average length of time for uh, HIV infection to develop to AIDS is what? Is it less than five years, five to seven, 10 years, or more than 10? What are we thinking? You're a senior mocha, says mocha, so official, okay. You say you're a senior nursing student. Okay. Hey, thank you for the free review. I'm from the Philippines currently. Okay. Shout out to you. Is it Aaron? Aaron, shout out to you, Aaron. Hey, how y'all doing? Hey, welcome, welcome. Hey, we're on the road to 10,000 likes. You know what I'm saying? Hey, make sure you guys smash that like button. Make sure you guys share. Make sure you guys follow. Also, I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey, right? Hey, so, hey, a little bit more about me. I'll tell you that after this question. All right. I'll tell y'all after this question. All right, here we go, y'all. Here's our answer in three, two, Orlando. I've been there once or twice, and the answer is C, 10 years. Uh, epi, was it the, the, epi, uh, the epidemi, yeah, the epidemiologic studies show that the average time for initial contact with HIV to develop to AIDS is 10 years. The interval for HIV infection to diagnose of AIDS ranges from about nine months to 20 years or longer with the median of 12 years. Physiological adaptation. Hold on one second, y'all. Hey, by the way, if you guys start seeing anybody that jumps in here that says something about look at my private or starts to try to send nudes up in here, first of all, we get nudes for free, okay? I don't know what people think. That's number one. Number two, let me know, and then we'll, we'll, we're going to ban that ass because that's exactly what Kevin likes doing. All right? A hey, physiological adaptation, third largest section on the NCLEX, 11 to 17%, okay? Yeah, it is a very it is very long time. It's just a slow killing type of you know disease that you can get. Um, question number 12, an 18-year-old... Um, client, male client, admitted with heat stroke begins to show signs of disseminated intravascular coagulation or DIC. Which of the following laboratory results is most most consistent with DIC? Low platelet count, elevated uh, fibrinogen level, is it low levels of fri uh, 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 fibrin uh, degeneration products or is a reduction or reduced pro uh, uh, prothrombin? What are we thinking? Hey, so yeah, a little bit about me, y'all. Hey, I failed the NCLEX three times. First time, 75 questions. Second time, 265 questions. Third time, 106 questions. Fourth time I took it, I passed it at 60 questions during COVID. And uh, let me tell you right now, it doesn't. no one fucking cares how many times you take that exam. Nobody cares. Hey, I want y'all to hear me. No one cares. No one cares how many times you've taken that exam. The job, all they care about is, hey, you got a license? Hey, come, hey, come, come get that ass to work. That's what it's all about. All right? So let your journey get you to the destination that everybody's trying to get to or that everybody will get to. All right. That's what it's all about. Your journey may be unique, but the destination is still the same, a.k.a. RN, LPN, whatever your goal is. All right. Nobody cares. So get all a hey, get a hey, stop pitying yourself. Get off your pity party and put the fucking work in. That's what it's about. All right. Here we go. And the answer is a low platelet count in DIC platelets and clotting factors are consumed um, what is it? Resulting in microthrombi and excessive bleeding. As clots form, fibrinogen levels decrease and the prothrombin time increases. That's reduction of risk potential, nine to seventeen percent. All right. It says I passed my exit. Gonna prepare for the NCLEX now. That's what I'm talking about. I heard we had to retake a whole program after three retakes. CC. That depends on the state. If you're in Florida, it might be something like that. But in Texas, it's not like that. Ohio, it's not like that. So it really just depends. Damn. It says I second guess myself first. Hey, Savage, here's my here's my whole thing too as well. If you can't definitively tell me why you're changing your answer, you better not change it. I want you to hear my voice, this soothing voice. And then you're going to be like, man, I should change the answer. And now I'm going to be like, nope, get your hand off that. Get your hand off that shit and stop playing games. If you don't know, don't you pick it. All right. Question 13. Mario comes to the clinic uh, complaining of fever, uh, drenched night sweats, and unexpected weight loss over the past three months. Physical examination reveals a single and large uh, supraclavicular lymph node, which of the following is the most probable diagnosis? Influenza, sickle cell anemia, leukemia, or Hodgkin's disease? What are we thinking? Shout out to all 567 of y'all in here rocking with me. Or 600 of y'all in here rocking with me now. Hey, we're doing NCLEX questions. I got them off nurseslabs.com. Make sure you guys go over there and check those out for yourself. Smash that like button. Hey, now we're on the road to 20,000 likes. Get carpal tunnel for me right now. And if you don't don't want to do that, put it on the floor, tap it with your toes, and then breathe through your nose. All right, here we go. Here, <laughs> here we go, y'all. Appreciate the follows. Here we go. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is D, Hodgkin's disease. Right. It says E, acute HIV. Matt, what the hell are you talking about, guy? All right. Here we go. Um, acute HIV. I can't. Um, Hodgkin's disease 
uh, typically causes fever, night sweats, weight loss, and lymph node enlargement. Physiological adaptation. Uh, Christy says oncology. Okay, is it Chris? Is it Chris Lynette? Chris, that is different. That's a nice name, a pretty name, Chris Lynette. So she said it's D A. Answer. The answer was D, ma'am. Physiological adaptation. All right. Third largest section on the NCLEX at 11, 11 to seventeen percent. Okay, eleven to seventeen percent. All right. Has just graduated nursing school today. Ready for the NCLEX, Tristan. That's what I'm talking about. A, and that's what we do. We get ready around here. Question 14, a male client with a gunshot wound requires an emergency blood transfusion. His blood type is AB negative. Which blood type would be the safest for him to receive? Is it AB, RH positive, A, RH positive, A, RH negative, or O, RH positive? What are we thinking? What are we thinking? Shout out to all 700 of y'all. We're doing NCLEX questions. Got them off nurseslabs.com. Make sure you guys go over there and check that out. For yourself, hey, if you're a new if you're a new nursing student or if you're about to start school, they have really good care plans. And if you don't know what care plans are, trust and believe me, that ass is about to figure it out when you go into that next semester. If it's your brand, it's your if it's your first time, okay. So make sure you guys go over there and check that out. Also, I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you are at in your nursing journey. Keep smashing that like button, keep sharing, and keep following. All right, here we go, y'all. Well, everybody's saying C. Everybody's saying C. They have the greatest care plan. They do. They have some really good care plans. I used their care plans while I was in nursing school, 17 to 18, and it was great. Here we go. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is C, A-R-H negative. Human blood can sometimes contain an inherited D antigen. Persons with the D antigen have R-H positive blood type. Those lacking the antigen have R-H negative Blood. It is important that a person with Rh negative blood receive Rh negative blood, or I'm sorry, Rh negative blood receive Rh negative blood. There we go. Physiological adaptation, y'all. Physiological adaptation. The large, second, third largest section on the NCLEX. I was going to get there. I promise. Third largest section on the NCLEX at 11 to 17 percent. There's a lot of them, y'all. There's a lot of these types of questions. Hey, I just want to let y'all know those three sections make up 44 to 49 percent of the entire NCLEX exam. Okay, almost half. So. If you can understand that, you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to rock that exam. It doesn't matter which one you're taking, either the RN or the PN. Okay. Question 15. Uh, Stacy was diagnosed with acute uh, lymphoid uh, leukemia or ALL or all, whatever you want to call it. Uh, she was discharged from the hospital following her chemotherapy treatment. Which statement of Stacy's mom indicates that she understands when she will contact the physician? So, what was correct? What is the correct statement uh, based out of our answer questions? She contacts the physician if Stacy has difficulty. Uh, and sleeping. I will call my doctor if Stacy has persistent vomiting and diarrhea. My physician should be called if Stacy is irritable and unhappy, or uh, should Stacy have continued hair loss? I need to call the doctor. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? Shout out to all 600 of y'all in here rocking with me. You guys already know the deal. You guys already know what we're doing, doing NCLEX questions. Make sure you guys go over there and check them out at nurseslabs.com. But hey, who are you if you're new here? Who are you if you're new here? Also, if you're not a nurse or doing or anything like that, what you doing here hanging out? I saw a couple of people say stuff, but y'all, hey, the comments are going so fast I can't keep up. Fifteen seconds, y'all. Fifteen seconds. Got B's. Got some C's. Kamal's here. Kamal, I see you. Think Maslow's okay, right? Think about at uh, yep. Yeah, uh, was it physical versus psychosocial? There you go, Camille. I'm in nursing school. Yeah, Camille. I already know that. I already know. That. I'm a vet tech. Electrolyte imbalances. Graduated 2010. Failed boards. Never took it again. Why, Lacey? Why? Why don't you never take it? Here we go. Here we go. Here's our answer. Here's our answer in three, two. Hold on. Somebody else said something. Somebody said, uh, my mother is going back to school. I'm so interested in what this entails. Oh, Percy, you've been, you've been, you've got, you've got to figure it out. And the answer is B. I will call my doctor if Stacy has persistent vomiting and diarrhea. Persistent, meaning more than 24 hours of vomiting, anorexia, and diarrhea are signs of toxicity, and the patient should stop the medication and notify the healthcare provider. That is part of health promotions and maintenance, which is a little smaller end. Um, what is it? Uh, six to twelve percent, along with basic care and comfort, which is also six to twelve percent. Hold on one second, y'all. Hold on one second. I gotta ban somebody else. I gotta ban somebody else. All right, y'all. I banned two people today, y'all. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Hey, I'm petty, by the way. I'm petty on a on a whole nother level. Hold on, I gotta ban somebody else. I gotta ban somebody else. Hey, I know that they're bots, but you know this gives me pleasure. All right, here we go. And hey, real quick, you guys, real quick break. Hey, seven day NCLEX course. That's a course that I created. It has 55 videos in there right now to include a new generation NCLEX. Make sure you guys go over there and check it out. Thebootnurse.com slash special. Also, check the, uh, 
up here, the link in my bio, that'll also take you there as well, okay? Uh, hold on one second. Here we go. Question, physician assistant loving, love refresher. My not Hey, Amber, I love it. I love that you're here. Question 16. Uh, Molly Sue, not to let, let's talk about how old that name is, right? Molly Sue uh, is diagnosed with acute lymphoid leukemia and beginning chemotherapy. Her mother states that the nurse, uh, her mother states to the nurse that it is hard to see Molly Sue with no hair. The best response for the nurse is what? Molly Sue looks very nice wearing a hat. Uh, you should never worry about her hair. Just be glad that she's alive. Please don't ever say that. Um, yes, it is upsetting, but try to cover up your feelings when you are with her or else she may be upset. Or is it this is only temporarily Molly Sue will recall her hair in three to six months, but may be different in texture. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? A, really? Really? Helen Keller? God. I can't even believe I just said that. You really, I fell back into that trapping. User 011, I called you Helen Keller. <laughs> hey, shout out to all 500 of y'all up in here. Therapeutic communication. Okay, Pamper, I see you out there. Um, <laughs> nurseslabs.com is where I got these questions from, y'all. Free sets of questions. You guys can go over there and check those out for yourself. It says throwing y'all off because I've been so right. Oh, yeah, yeah. You've been right. You've been right, all right. You know what I'm saying? You've been right. Uh, make sure you guys smash that like button. Hey, we need, hey, need 20,000 likes. 20,000 likes. Hey, somebody, hey, Camille, Camille, Camille. Party animal, what's up? What's up? How are you? Uh, y'all got to learn that. Hey, y'all got to learn it. Y'all, hey, therapeutic communication is huge. It's huge. It's huge. It's huge. All right, here we go, y'all. Here we go. Here's our answer. Here, it hit them with that education. You already know what the deal is. In three, two, A. And the answer is D. This is only temporary. Stacy will regrow her hair, her new hair in three to six months. Uh, but may uh, be in different texture. This is the appropriate response. The nurse should help the mother uh, or should help the mother how to cope with her own feelings regarding the child's disease so as not to affect the child negatively. Negativity. Um, negativity. You already know. Don't, don't do it, all right? When hair grows back, uh, it is still the same color and texture. Psychosocial integrity. By A, believe it or not, one of the smaller sections on the NCLEX, right? Six to 12%. Six to twelve percent, right? Pharmacist degree. Shout out to you. Uh, is it is it Lyra or Lyra? Shout out to you. Neg negatively, yeah. Ne what did I say? Negative. Neg negative. Negative. All right, here we go. Question seventeen. Um, Brittany, uh, who is undergoing chemotherapy for her throat cancer, is experiencing uh, uh stomatitis. To promote oral hygiene and comfort, the nurse in charge should what? Uh, provide frequent mouthwash with normal saline. Apply uh, vis was it viscous viscous yeah viscous lidocaine to oral ulcers as needed. Use uh, lemon uh, glycerin swabs every two hours or rinse mouth with hydrogen peroxide. What are we thinking? Shout out to all 645 of y'all. We're doing NCLEX questions. Make sure you guys like. Make sure you guys share. Make sure you guys follow. Hey, I need all of them. I need everybody to be my friend. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I got abandonment issues. Okay, I got abandonment issues. So I'm going to need for y'all to help me not feel abandoned, okay? Be my friend. Uh, <laughs> nurseslabs.com is where I got these questions from, free sets of questions, okay? Also, if you are new here, I want to know who you are, where you're from, and where you're at in your nursing journey. And if you're not, like, what are you doing here? Hang out with us, okay? Normal saline isn't going to do anything? Mm. Maybe. You may be right. What website? Nurseslabs.com. All right, y'all. Here we go, here we go, here we go, one more time. Hold on, my bad, my bad, y'all. I gotta get somebody at 600. Oh man, I wish I had 600 on here. All right, here we go, y'all, here's our answer. Here's our answer in three, two. Hannah says, I'm about to take the NCLEX. What you crying for? Hey, don't cry, don't you cry. It's coming, it's happening, all right? Just just, just let hey, let whatever's gonna happen, happen with the NCLEX, but you better prepare for it, all right? Uh, it's B by, uh, wait, what? Hold on, uh, stomatitis can uh, cause pain. This can be relieved by uh, applying uh, topical anesthetics such as lidocaine bef uh, uh, before mouth care. Correct. Basic care and comfort, 6 to 12%. All right, I had to reread it. What you mean? Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it, user. Stop it, user 11. Stop it. Stop it. Lies. Oh, yeah, you see now? So it makes sense. That's why when you guys are doing questions you want to read, you need content, y'all. You need content. It's not a game. Like, you can't just do it with tricks, all right? You need content. You need Q&A. You need rationales. Read your rationales. That is how you solidify and retain your information, okay? RMA hoping to take my arm. Oh, Nikki, you must be in Canada. Uh... Yeah, you must be in Canada. Uh, question 18. During the administration of chemotherapy agents, Nurse Oliver observes that the IV site is red and swollen when the IV is touched. 
Uh, Stacy shouts in pain. The first nursing action to take is what? Notify the physician, flush the IV line with saline solution, immediately discontinue the infusion or apply an ice pack to the site, followed by warm compress. What are we thinking? What are we thinking, y'all? Shout out to all 700 of y'all in here rocking with me. Hey, we need 10,000. I mean, we need 20,000 likes, y'all. 20,000. 20,000. 20,000. Helen Keller, you already know. Hey, what I tell you? What I tell you about rushing me? Mm. We don't do that around here. One one says C. Hey, you ain't gotta yell at me. Cool, I got you. I got you, Haley. Haley, thank you for the follow. Somebody else just give me a follow too. Stop the poison. All right, CC. We stopping it out here. You know what I'm saying? C phlebitis. Okay. All right, y'all. Here we go. Here we go. Here's our answer in three, two, and the answer is C. We want to stop. When they immediately discontinue the infusion, edema or swelling. Here come Helen Keller about to say something. Told you I got the answer right, Kevin. <laughs> edema. Or swelling at the IV site is a sign that the needle uh, has been dislodged and the IV solution is leaking into the tissues, the tissues causing the edema. Yeah, I know you told me, whatever. Uh, the patient feels pain as the nerves are irritated by the pressure of, and the IV solution. The first action the nurse would be to discontinue the infusion right away to prevent further edema and other complications. Management of care. A hey, management of care is 18 to 23 percent. 18 to 20, the largest section on the NCLEX. That is management of care, management of care, pharmacology, physiological adaptation. Third, all three, the big three. That's what I call them. All right, Danny, don't cry. Hey, if you're scared, go to church. You already know what the deal is. Question 19, the term blue bloater refers to a male client. Which of the following conditions? Is it ARDS, asthma, uh, uh, chronic obstructive bronchitis or emphysema? What are we thinking? What are we thinking, y'all? What are we thinking? Hey, if you guys are new here, welcome, welcome. We're doing NCLEX questions. These are both for RNs and LPNs, all right? RNs and LPNs. Got them off nurseslabs.com. You guys can go over there and check those out for yourself, all right? Also, if you guys are new here, I want to know who you is, where you from, where you at in your nursing journey, all that good jazz. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? I'll give you all 10 seconds, y'all. 10 seconds, 10 seconds. All right. Wait, no, I mean, hey, y'all better fit. You better fit. You best figure it out. And three, two, and the answer is C, chronic obstructive bronchitis. Because clients with chronic obstructive bronchitis uh, up here bloated. Uh, they have large barrel chest and peripheral edema, cyanotic nail beds, and at times, uh, what is it, the, the circumoral cyanosis, physiological adaptation, which is what? Third largest section on the NCLEX. 11 to 17 percent. I'm a flight medic. Am I allowed here? Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. Read. Hey, I got a, I got a special heart. I got a special place in my heart for flight nurses or flight medics, flight nurses, all that good. I did a little bit of flying when I was on deployment, you know what I'm saying? When I was, you know, like a decade ago. But, you know, I'm a, I know what you're saying out there. Here we go. Question 20. The term pink puffer uh, refers to the female client with which of the following conditions? Is it ARDS, asthma, uh, chronic obstructive bronchitis or emphysema? What are we thinking? That is not. When I first read this question, I saw pink puffer. You know, you know what? Never mind. This is this is a this is a this is a family stream. This is a family stream. We ain't going there. I take my is it Desi? You take your NCLEX win on Monday, ma'am. You Gucci out here. You Gucci. You got the weekend. Hey, on Sunday, don't you study nothing. Don't you study nothing. Hey, if you're taking your NCLEX. Don't you study nothing on on. Uh, <laughs> don't y'all study nothing on Sunday. OK. All right, y'all. Here we go. Here's our answer. Here is our answer. PG-13 only. Hey, you already know the deal. I mean, the F word is considered rated R. So I guess I'm, I'm, I guess I'm like towing the line. You know what I'm saying? Here we go. But the answer is D. Because of the large amount of energy that it takes to breathe, clients with emphysema are usually uh, uh, cachectic, whatever. Um they're pink and usually breathe through pursed lips, hence the term puffer. Physiological adaptation, third largest section on the NCLEX. Third largest section on the NCLEX, 11 to 17%. You graduate in two weeks. Hey, you answering all these questions. You already know what the deal is. Desi says, thank you. Uh, everyone tells me not to study the day before, and I won't. Yeah, Desi, don't you study the day before and then come in here and tell me, oh, my God, Kevin, I studied the day before. I'm like, well, I done told you. Obviously, you don't listen. Uh, <laughs> hey, real quick. Hey, I get asked all the time. Hey. Kevin, do you do private tutoring or private coaching? Hey, and they asked about ATI, they asked about HESI, they asked about NCLEX. Yo, you ask and now you shall receive. 
right? That link is also in my bio, but it's the bootnurse.com slash call. You guys can go over there. You guys can check that out. Um, and yeah, you get a, you'll get a, we'll get, we'll talk on the phone or we'll do a web call for a little over an hour. Usually I'm on the call, I'm on the phone with people for like an hour and a half, but yo, we usually don't get off that call until your, an, until your questions are answered. You know what I'm saying? Kevin, plug it, plug, hey, you already know what the deal is. You know what the deal. All right. But hey, so that, co- hey, so that's available. Y'all asked for it. So I'm giving it to y'all. He- ATI help, HESI help, exits, whatever. Your nursing school, mentorship, whatever. You wanted this there. You know, look at it at your leisure. Hold on one second, y'all. I got to ban somebody. Oh, I done banned three people today. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Uh, I'm a PA student, but I'm watching for fun. Is it Abigail? Shout out to you. Can I call you Ab? Abby? I'm calling you Abby. Um, Question 21. Jose is in danger of respiratory arrest following the administration of a narcotic analgesic. The an arterial blood gas value is obtained. Nurse Oliver would expect the PACO2 to be which of the following values? Is it 15, 30, 40, or 80? Hey, so Natalie, are we talking about the PACO2 or the PAO2? Don't get your, don't think of, think about, think about, don't, hey, don't, I'm just saying, just think about it. We guys know what I'm saying, RTFQ. So we want to read the question, right? You don't know? Hey, that's okay. We about to figure out. We about we finna we finna figure out what the answer is here in like ten seconds. All right, what not to study the night before? Anything? Don't study anything. Don't open a book. Don't listen to a podcast of anything NCLEX related. Because guess what? If you're trying to study the day before, that means you don't know it. And if you don't know it by now, you don't know it at all. I'm just keeping it all the way real. What's up, Kev? I see you out there, big dog. Here we go. Here's our answer in three, two, and the answer is D. Shout out to y'all who got that. It says off acid base imbalance. Shout out to you. The answer is D. The answer is D. A client about to go into respiratory arrest will have insufficient ventilation and will be retaining carbon dioxide. The value expected would be around 80 millimeter. 80 millimeters of mercury, right? All other value, all other values are lower than expected. That is a reduction of risk potential nine to fifteen percent. All right. Carlos, are you purring at me like a cat? Hey, bro. I see you out there. I see you out there. You know what I'm saying? Here we go. Question number 26. Timothy's ABG results are the following. pH 7.16. PaCO2 of 80. PaO2 of 46. Bicarb is 24. And SaO2 is 81%. This ABG result represents which of the following? Metabolic acidosis, metabolic alkalosis, respiratory acidosis, or respiratory alkalosis. What are we thinking? Hey, here's a really good one. Hey, two, a hey, two plus two plus two equals six, right? That's what your bicarb is, right? Hey, and if your pH and the bicarb are both going in the same direction, it's metabolic, okay? pH and the bicarb are both going in the same direction, it's metabolic, right? If it's not lung and if it's not vomiting or suctioning, your default answer is metabolic acidosis. Yep. You already know what the deal is. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Then it's A. Okay, Savage. All right, girl, let's see what the deal is. In three, two, and the answer is, hold on, hold up. Ah, oh, there it is. Okay, it is C. Yeah, because PaCO2 is high at 80 millimeters of mercury, and the result is metabolic. Your bicarb is normal, which means that your respiratory, you're in respiratory acidosis. There you go. I had to read that real quick. I'm like, hold up, hold up, hold up. No, no, no. Well, we good though. We good. We good. Right? So if your PA, if your stuff is normal, then it's not going to be, it's not going to be what you think it is. All right. It says, take my text next week, wish me luck. No, you good out there. You, hey, you don't need the luck because you've been prepared for it. You know what I'm saying? You've been preparing for it. All right. Here we go. That's why I picked it. Hey, that's okay. That's okay. I'm glad you picked it. Hey, reduction of risk potential, right? It is what? Nine to 15% on the NCLEX exam. Okay. Hey, question 23. Norma has started a new drug for hypertension. 30 minutes after she takes the drug, she develops chest tightness and becomes shortness of breath and uh, and tachypnea, right? Which, I'm sorry, not which, she has a decreased level of consciousness. These signs indicate which of the following conditions. Is it an asthma attack, pulmonary embolism, respiratory failure, or rheumatoid arthritis? What are we thinking? Shout out to all 700 plus y'all in here rocking with me. We're doing NCLEX questions. Got them off nurseslabs.com. Nurseslabs.com. Hey, we're on the road to 30,000 likes. I don't know what happened. I think y'all got tired. Y'all got tired. Y'all need a drink of water. You know what I'm saying? You need some NSAIDs to help with the with the pain and the swelling that you got going on in your fingers. You know what I'm saying? 
Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up, James? I see you out there, sir. Hey, anybody looking to get into entrepreneurship digitally wise, hey, check out my man James Ward. One of, hey, that's a good dude over there. If you guys don't, if you guys are looking for a side hustle, that's the man to talk to right there, James Ward. Make sure you guys go over there and check him out. All right, yo, bro, it's B. All right, bro, I see you. I see you. All right, let's see what the answer is in three, two, and the answer is not B. Um, so that ain't it. Uh, it's respiratory failure. Um. Physiological adaptation, third largest section on the NCLEX at 11 to 17 percent. All right, 11 to 17 percent. The client was reacting to the drug with respiratory signs of impending anaphylaxis, which could lead to eventually respiratory failure. Okay, respiratory failure. All right, so think about that. Hey, remember when you guys are doing, when you guys are studying, you need content, content Q and A, and you also need the rationales. The rationales help you retain the information that you are learning. All right, shout out to all one thousand of y'all up in here. Hey, we're on question twenty four. We're doing NCLEX questions. We got them off nurseslabs.com, and we rocking. All right, I appreciate everybody that's here. All right, question twenty four. Mister Gonzalez was admitted to the hospital with ascites and jaundice uh, to rule out. Cirrhosis of the liver, which laboratory test indicates cirrhosis? Is it A, decreased uh, red blood cell count? Is it decreased serum uh, acid phosphatate level? Is it an elevated white blood cell count? Or is it an elevated uh, serum amino transferase? What are we thinking? Everybody's telling me D. We got a B out there. Got it. Okay, cool. Hey, make sure you guys like, make sure you guys share, make sure you guys follow. That's the trifecta that TikTok needs. The trifecta that TikTok needs to get it out there to the people. Hey, if you're in nursing school right now, what are you doing if you're not sharing this with somebody? All right. Share this information out there. Get it to them. Get it out there. Get it out there to folks. You know what I'm saying? Get it out there. Stuff like that be free. You know what I'm saying? It's free. All right, y'all. Here we go. Here we go. Here's our answer. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is D. It is elevated uh, serum amino transferase. Right. Reduction of risk potential nine to 15 percent. Hepatic cell death causes the release of liver enzymes and ALT, AST and LDLs into circulation. Uh, liver cirrhosis is a chronic and irreversible disease of the liver characterized by generalized inflammation and fibrosis of the liver tissues. All right. Hey, I'm telling you right now, when you guys start working in the floor, ICU or med surge or tele or whatever, and you start seeing people come in there with cirrhosis, you better know what these labs are. All right. Ascites, GI bleeds or the whole nine. Okay. You got it. Natalie, appreciate the TGI Friday. I appreciate you. Natalie. Question 25. The biopsy of Mr. Gonzalez's or Mr. Gonzalez confirms the diagnosis of cirrhosis. Mr. Gonzalez is at increased risk for excessive bleeding, primarily because of what? Is it impaired clotting mechanism? Is it var uh, varix formation, inadequate nutrition, or trauma of invasive procedure? What are we thinking? Shout out to all 700 of y'all in here rocking with me. We're doing NCLEX questions. If you're new here, I want to know who you are, where you're from, and where you are at in your nursing journey. And if you're not a nurse or on that journey to become a nurse, what are you doing here? I have some PAs in here. We had some med, some, some med students, some medical, uh, medical assisting students, CNAs. Hey, by the way, if you're a CNA, a patient care tech, if you're a med, a, 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 a medical assistant, if you're X-ray pharmacy, a hey, all of y'all that are not RNs or LPNs, hey, I fucking love y'all. But that doesn't say anything about RNs or LPNs because I love y'all too. But y'all make our jobs go round. And if we can't, if we don't have that team aspect, there's no way we can get shit done. There's no way we can get shit done, you know? Hey, and if you're an LPN, hey, I love you too. Like legit, all right? You are a fucking nurse. And don't let no motherfucker ever tell you that you're not a nurse. It literally is in your title. You see what I'm saying? LPN, you're a nurse. You saying don't forget the lab. There you go. Hey, shout out to the hey, shout out to my lab. Hey, hey, but y'all be y'all be making me mad because I'm telling you, when I send stuff stuff down, it's not hemolyzed. You're gonna run it as I send it down. You understand me? <laughs> no, shout out to my lab, folks. Shout out to y'all. And the answer is A, impaired clotting mechanism. All right. So uh, uh, cirrhosis of the liver results in decreased vitamin K absorption and formation. Uh, of clotting factors resulting in impaired clotting mechanisms. That's the reduction of risk potential. Nine to 15 percent, y'all. Nine to 15 percent. I work in the lab. Look, let me tell you something right now. Don't you ever call me and tell me that something's seems like, hey, in pharmacy, let me tell you something. If I ask for ne like neosinephrine, you need to let me know when you put it in the tube, okay? Let me know when you put it in the tube so I ain't waiting and I have a patient that's, that's crashing on me because I need Neo. You know what I'm saying? But I love my pharmacy techs. I love y'all. Hey, real quick. Hey, if you need help, with coaching, like mentorship, 
in regards to anything with regards to NCLEX or even if you just need mentorship regardless. Hey, you can check that out, thebootnurse.com slash coaching. That is also available. Hey, you guys asked for it and this is what I'm giving y'all, all all right? You guys asked for it and this is what I'm giving y'all. Check that link out, thebootnurse.com slash coaching. Also, that link is up here in my bio. Okay, you guys can go over there and check that out for yourself. It says, thank you for, for sharing the questions. Hey, this is what I like to do. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, okay? Here we go, question number 26. Mr. J... Oh, man, I wish Jay was here. But Mr. J develops hepatic encephalopathy. Which clinical manifestation is most common with this condition? Is it uh, increased urine output, altered level of consciousness, decreased tendon reflexes, or hypotension? What are we thinking? What are we thinking? All right, so everybody scream and be at me. Scream and be. Hey, we need 30,000 likes, y'all. Encephalopathy is one of what? Is one of my faves? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Uh, I've been an LPN for 13 years. I just finished my exit HESI and ADM pending on Wednesday. That's what I'm talking about. Jess. Jess. That's what I'm talking about. Congratulations to you. Congratulations to you. All right. Hey, congratulations to everybody who's about to graduate. Hey, y'all's hard work is about to fucking pay off and y'all are about to get out here and get this work. You know what I'm saying? Laxulos. OK, OK. Here we go, y'all. Here's our answer. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is B. Altered level of consciousness. Changes in behavior and level of consciousness are the first signs of hepatic encephalopathy. Uh, hepatic encephalopathy is caused by liver failure and develops uh, when the liver is unable to convert um, protein metabolic product ammonia to urea. This results in accumulation of ammonia and other toxic in, and other toxics in the blood uh, that damage the cells. Physiological adaptation, which is what? Third largest section on the NCLEX at how many? 11 to 17%? <laughs> yes, Lord. Yes, yes. That's what it is. That's what it is. Hey, I'm telling you, I've taken care of many patients in the ICU that have had a hepatic encephalopathy. And all I hear is that that one thing that Mark Klimek said where he says something, who can sterilize my bowel? And it says Neo can because you can give somebody lactulose or neomycin, canamycin or whatever to push all the nastiness out of, their, out of their body. Bring those ammonia levels down through the GI tract, right? Here we go. Question number 27. Patrick. Not from not from SpongeBob, who is diagnosed with liver cirrhosis, is experiencing symptoms of hepatic encephalopathy. The physician orders 50 mLs of lactulose PO every two hours. Patrick suddenly develops diarrhea. Good. That's what we want. The, the best the nurse's best action would be to what? I'll see if the physician is in the hospital. Maybe you're reacting to the drug. I will withhold the next dose. I'll lower the dose in order. Uh, as ordered, so the drug causes only, uh, what is it, two to four stools daily. Frequently bowel movements are needed to reduce sodium levels. What are we thinking? What are we thinking, y'all? What are we thinking? We got some C's, we got some D's, all right? Hey, shout out to everybody. Shout out to everybody in here rocking with me. We are doing NCLEX questions. I got them off nurseslabs.com. Hey, we're on the road to 30,000 likes. We're on the road to 30,000 likes. First of all, I didn't tell you nothing sand dooms i didn't say nothing you ain't you ain't hear nothing you ain't see nothing you know helen keller style oh he ain't in here as a nurse yes ebony as a nurse and as a nurse in perfect world not in real world okay hey perfect world that is what nclex is don't for, don't y'all forget it here we go y'all here's our answer here's our answer in three two and the answer is c i'll lower the dose as ordered so the drug causes only two to four stools a day lactulose is given to a patient with hepatic encephalopathy to reduce absorption of ammonia in the intestines by binding with ammonia and promoting more frequent bowel movements. If the patient experiences diarrhea, it indicates overdosage and the nurse must reduce the amount of medication given to the patient. The stool will be mushy or soft. Lactulose is also very sweet and may cause cramping and bloating. That is part of physiolo uh, pharmacological and parenteral therapies, which is the second largest section on the NCLEX at 14 to 18%. Hey, so, hey one thing I want y'all to realize, they can mix these together. I can give you a pharmacology question and make it a management of care question as well, okay? And you can get two for the price of one. And that's what the NCLEX does. You guys got to remember that the NCLEX is... The NCLEX is a computer adaptive test. It says, wow, I should have RTFQ. Ma'am, you already know what the deal is. You already know that we need to read those questions. Read, hey, RTFQ, RTFQ, read the question. Read, hey, and y'all can take a guess on what the F stands for, okay? Uh, and here we go, question number 28. Which of the following groups of symptoms indicate a ruptured abdominal aortic aneurysm? All right. Is it a low back, lower back pain, increased blood pressure, decreased red blood cell count, increased white blood cell count, 
Uh, B, severe low back pain, uh, decreased blood pressure, decreased RBCs, increased WBCs. Is it C, severe low back pain, decreased blood pressure, decreased RBCs, uh, RBC count, that's on there twice, and then decreased WBCs. Or is it intermittent lower back pain, decreased blood pressure, decreased RBC count, or increased white blood cell count? What are we thinking? Somebody said C like three times. There's only one C on here, silly. Hey, we're on the road to 40,000 likes, y'all. 40,000 likes. Hey, get carpal tunnel for me. Why? Because you love me just like I love y'all. Y'all are out here doing some. Hey, y'all are out here participating. And I love this on a Friday. Y'all could have been anywhere else, but y'all here with me. Hey, make sure you guys smash that like button, share and follow. Got these questions off nurseslabs.com. Nurseslabs.com. All right. Free sets of questions. Hey, if you're a brand new nursing student, they got care plans over there for y'all. I'm just letting y'all know they work wonders. I'm talking about chef's kiss, baby. Chef's kiss. And also, I'm going to do an ask me anything to follow this. All right. I'm going to do an ask me anything to follow. All right. Here we go. Question answer is B, severe low back pain, decreased blood pressure, decreased RBCs and increased white blood cell count. Severe lower back pain indicates an aneurysm rupture secondary to pressure being applied within the abdominal cavity. When rupture occurs, the pain is constant because it can't be alleviated until the aneurysm is repaired. Blood pressure decreases due to the loss of blood. After the aneurysm ruptures, the, vascul the vasculature is interrupted and blood volume is lost. So blood pressure wouldn't increase. For the, uh, for the same reason, the RBC count has decreased, not increased. The white blood cell count increases as cells migrate to the site of injury. Physiological adaptation. Third largest section on the NCLEX. A physiological adaptation deals with chronic acute trauma for both for both adults and for children. Okay. Adults and children, they, they can hey, they have subcategories with categories, client needs, all that gets up. Triple A's make us cry and hey, I bet they do. Trust me, I had we, we did a triple A on somebody in the OR. Trust and believe me, the units of blood that we needed to have for that was, was through the roof. All right, through the roof. All right. So appreciate everybody participating. Also, if you're new here, I want to know who you are, where you're from, and where you're at in your nursing journey. Okay. Here we go. Question 29. Also, if you're not a nurse, what are you doing here hanging out with us? Let us know. Let us know. Um, question 29. After undergoing a cardiac catheterization, Tracy has a large puddle of blood under his buttocks. Which of the following steps should the nurse take? Call for help, obtain vital signs, ask the client to lift up or apply gloves and assess the groin site. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? All right. I, I see somebody, I see people already throwing stuff in there. So think about Maslow's, right? All right. Do we have enough information, you know, with Adpi, with Adpi uh, in regards to that? You know what I mean? So this is where you have to apply critical thinking to make a clinical judgment. Critical thinking to make a clinical judgment. That's what the NCLEX wants, ladies and gentlemen, or whatever you identify as. Sorry, whatever. Um, but yeah, clinical thinking or critical thinking, clinical judgment. That's what the NCLEX wants. You have to put them to application and analysis type of questions, not remembering type of questions. Okay. Apply pressure. Okay. All right, y'all. Here we go. Here we go, y'all. Here's our answer. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is apply gloves and assess the groin sites. Right. Observing standard precautions is the first priority when dealing with any blood fluid. Assessment of the groin is, is the second priority. This establishes where the blood is coming from and determines how much blood has been lost. The goal in this situation is to stop the bleeding. That is the reduction of risk potential, the reduction of risk potential nine to 15 percent. 9 to 15%. This is why I say it's important that you know content, you read your questions, your answers, and you read your rationales. Your rationales will tell you why. Your ration, listen to me. My, your rationales will tell you why. It's common sense, people. Is it, is it, is it, I don't know how to pronounce your name. I'm going to fuck it up and I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to fuck it up on purpose. But you can't say it's common sense for people who have never, who, ha, who haven't even been down that line yet. You have people in here who haven't even been to nursing school yet and they're trying to get their learn on. So it's not necessarily common sense, especially if you've never been exposed to it. You see what I'm saying? So you can't say you can't say it's common sense. All right. So here we go. Question number 30. Which of the following treatments is a suitable surgical intervention for a client with unstable angina? All right. Is it cardiac catheterization, an echocardiogram, nitroglycerin or percutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty? What are we thinking? It says another side they do is in the wrist. What? Oh, you're talking about. Wait, what are you talking about? Uh, 
Uh, I'm from Florida. Take my NCLEX in 2024. Shout out to you. Is it Rosemary? Shout out to y'all. Hey, so if you guys are new here, welcome. Hey, y'all got me to 30,000 likes? Hey, hey, give me to 40. Hey, give me to 40 right now. I'll make it happen. Give me to 40. Hey, get carpal tunnel for me because you love me. Hey, we're on question number 30, y'all. We got them off nurseslabs.com. These are where we got these questions from. I want to know who you are, where you're and where you are in your nursing journey, where you're from. I, I live in Texas. You know what I'm saying? That's the only place that anybody ever needs to live. You know what I'm saying? We could walk around here with our guns out. And we could just do what we want. Hey, don't, you know what I'm saying? Don't do that. Don't do that. Be safe. Be, be a responsible citizen. All right. You're from the Philippines. That's what I'm talking about. Is it no, no, no Thondo, no Thondo from the UK. That's a very unique name. Okay. All right. Uh, LPN in Cali. I've been to Cali. I lived in San Diego for a little bit. I lived in Jacksonville for about four years. Uh, I've been deployed. I was in Cuba. I was in Afghanistan and Canada. They ain't never been. Ain't never been there. Florida, but not. Uh, but no one of these Florida. Hey, look. Oh, so you you live in Tiffany? So you claim Florida, but you ain't one of them Florida nurses, girl. Stop it. RN CCRN from Jersey. Shout out to you, CCRN. You hey, you were real cool. Hey, you really wanted to put that, huh? You really wanted to just stun on everybody and say, look. I'm a CCRN. Y'all ain't bitches. I'm just playing. <laughs> Here we go, y'all. Here's our answer. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is, hey, Victoria, are you rushing me? Don't do that. Italia. Uh, that's what I'm talking about from Italy. Okay. Shout out to Jamaica. And the answer is a PTCA, percutaneous transluminal corn, uh, uh, coronary angioplasty. Can alleviate the blockage and restore blood flow and oxygenation. That is physiological adaptation. Yeehaw, what the hell? Uh, like yeehaw hell. Um, physiological adaptation, that is the third largest section on the NCLEX at 11 to 17%. Remember that it makes up part of the big three as management of care, pharmacology, physiological adaptation, 44 to 49% of the entire NCLEX exam. All right, entire NCLEX exam. All right. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is it for the questions today on this Friday. That is a wrap. Hey, I banned like five people. It is awesome. And they're all bots. And they th they're going to try to sell us our, their news. But why do that? Because that's stupid. You know what I'm saying? Because we get them for free. Shout out to the internet. Anyways, uh, appreciate you guys hanging out. Appreciate you guys participating. Hey, but I'm going to do an Ask Me Anything after this. I'm going to, hey, you guys are welcome. Hey, you guys are welcome. Hey, if you guys find, if you guys have found value in this, Make sure you guys smash that like button. Make sure you guys share. Make sure you guys follow. Also, check out my website, thebootnurse.com. Check out the, the seven-day NCLEX course. It's going for $97. Hey, you get it for a lifetime, and you get all the updates. You get access to the to the Facebook group. You get all you get all kinds of little perks. Hey, also, got a free download. Y'all can go over there and check that out. Also, the ebook, coaching, tutoring, all the stuff that people have been asking me for, it's over there. Make sure you guys go over there and check that out, thebootnurse.com, okay? Hey, and we're going to do an ask me anything. Not a nurse, but I love seeing the lab, the lab correlation. But hey, so here's the thing with nurses, we got to know it. We got to know it. We got to know it. What's up, everybody? Hey, we got 400 and like 60 something people that are in here rocking with me, all right? Uh, it says, well done, Kevin. Oh, uh, Al, what's up, Al? Hey, Al, I know we were talking about that. Yeah, hey, I'm glad that you like, I'm glad that you like the live. I come on here when I bring the energy, you know what I'm saying? So, hey, a little bit about me. I've been in the Navy for 16 years. I've been a nurse for three and a half years. I've worked in three different ICUs. Three. I've worked in three different ICUs. Um, it says more of this, Kevin. Hey, I do this every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5:30. So make sure you make sure you hit that notification button. Make sure you hey, make sure you guys participate. Hey, I'm, I'm just letting you know I'm currently working right now, ma'am. If you're working right now, how you talking to me? Huh? 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 You know, and by the way, you guys can check all of these out. They're gonna end up on my YouTube. They're gonna end up on my YouTube. Okay, so if you happen to miss a live at any point in time, it'll eventually end up on my YouTube. Okay, so. Uh, like I said, been in the Navy for 16 years. I've been a nurse for three and a half. I've worked in the three different ICUs. I've worked in the PACU and I've also worked in the OR. And uh, right now I'm going back to school to get my master's in um, education and nursing education. Right. And um, I failed my NCLEX three times, y'all. Three. I failed it three times. And let me tell you something. Nobody cares. Nobody cares how many times you failed that exam. Uh, when you it says when you wait, what? When you be popping on, oh, when you be popping on, how often, what time? Savage, Savage Mama 22. I literally just said that. Did you not hear me? Did you not hear me? Ma'am, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 5.30, Central Standard Time. Gotcha. Very impressed, very professional, Kevin. Top job. Thank you, Al. I appreciate you. Um, I, I did not. Okay, Savage, I got you. No worries. Hey, so also that it's also, <clears throat> excuse me, it's also in my bio how often I go. Um, a&M can do RN. I don't even know what A&M, what is A-M, what is A-N-M is? Woo, three times. Yeah, I took it three times. What do you mean just in TikTok? Just on TikTok. What do you mean? 
Um, so yeah, I failed it three times. First time it was a, it was 75 questions. Second time is 265 questions. Third time it was 106 questions. And then I eventually passed that 60 questions. Let me tell y'all something. You need to have accountability. You need to have good grasp of your time management. You need to have an understanding of content. You need to put yourself on a schedule. You need to, uh, uh, do questions and answers. And you also need to do the rationales. That's what you do. That's what you're supposed to do. That's how you're going to do it. Some people don't do it. Some other people are like, oh, you know, the NCLEX was easy. Okay, if the NCLEX was easy, then no one would fucking fail it. I'm just keeping it all the way. If the NCLEX was easy, you would have 100% pass rate at every school and across the nation. So when people come in here and start telling me that the NCLEX is easy, I try not to cuss them out. It says, you're going to be a great nurse educator. Hannah, I appreciate you. It says, true. Is there lives on Facebook, Insta, or other socials? No. So I only do the lives here. You want to know why I do the lives here? Because this is where I get the most engagement. When I did take, when I did it on Instagram, I only had like two people in there. When I did TikTok, I had, I, today I had over a thousand people in there. So, and now I got 400 and some people listen to me and run my mouth. You know what I'm saying? Uh, no one fails these days. Uh, is it Raman? Raman? Let me tell you something right now. If no one fails these days, then why do people fail the NCLEX? If no one fails, why did I fail the NCLEX? If no one fails, why do I coach people one-on-one? -on -one? You see what I'm saying? People do fail these days. In school, it's a little bit of a different story because they got they, they want to try to mosey you through because it makes their graduation stuff look good. It makes, you know, makes their numbers look good. But if hey, the hey, the whole point about nursing school is to get you through school. That's it. I'm, I'm hearing like things are starting to change and transition now. But, you know, when I was going through school, it was like, hey, you need to do this. There was no type of guidance. Hey, you, hey you're 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 a self learner. You need to figure it out. If I'm a self learner, then why in the absolute hell am I paying you all this money? Like if I can't even get an answer, you know, what I'm saying it says, let me see. I'm trying to get I'm trying to I'm trying to go through you guys comments. But that's a little bit about me. Uh, I've been coaching for the last three years. Um, I, I've, been, I've been coaching people for the last three years. Um, like, which is why, you know, I created, you know, the, the, the boot nurse and all the other stuff. A lot of people want to know what the boot nurse stands for. It, it has to do with my military background as well as, you know, in the civilian sector or as everybody gets called a baby nurse. I don't, for some reason, I don't like that term. It's weird. So I say boot. So new people that come into the military out of boot camp and they go straight to their schools or jobs, we call them boots. So they're brand new. They know nothing about nothing and they learn as they go. So I saw I call myself a boot nurse is because no matter where I go, I'll never be an expert at something. But I'll all you'll always you're always consistently learning, always consistently learning. We are currently sitting at 100 percent pass rate in my trash school. Mm. You're 100 percent pass rate at your trash school. And then watch when the NCLEX come. I guarantee it won't be that way. Uh, currently, uh, it got. It currently, it got easy, I feel. So for, is it, I'm, I'm, is it Ramon? Sir, I'm, it, it may be easy for you, for you, for you, but not for everybody else. There is someone being, there is someone being interesting in the comments. I'm just saying, who's being interesting, Camille? Uh, can I be a nurse if I'm allergic to penicillin? Uh, yes, that has nothing to do. I mean, you're not the one getting penicillin, so there's no, there's no issue for you um, to, uh, to, not be able to do that. Uh, but 36 people uh, are how many have to take it? I don't even know what that means. Um, how long after LPN school would you take? Would you wait to take a bachelor's? I would if you could bridge ASAP, bridge ASAP. Every school would have 100 percent pass rate. Yeah. Jay, my man. Yo, you missed it earlier because in one of the questions it said Jay and you missed it. I was like, damn, I wish Jay was here. And there you go. You know, speak it into existence and it shall be so. That's right. Thank you, Kevin, for encouraging us. Hey, is it Floranta? Florante. Florante, you're welcome. This is what I do every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I try to give guidance and I try to answer you guys' questions. My school doesn't make anything easy. Uh, is it Ant Antoinette? I bet I bet they don't. My school didn't either. Uh, our school uh, makes us have a transitions quarter uh, where we just do a whole review. That must be nice. That must be nice. Is it Melly? That must be nice that you have that. You love that. It says, hello, love this. I'm starting nursing school this January. You're excited but nervous. Is it Antonia? Hey, shout out to you. Shout out to Oh, there goes somebody being interesting. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. I got to ban somebody. You guys already know what the deal is. You guys already know what the deal is. All right. I'm trying to get to you guys' questions. Damn, bro. All the bots want to come in here and, and give me nudies. Like, stop it. Stop it. Do I look like a dude that would just buy nudies? Don't none of y'all answer that. Don't none of y'all answer that because I know y'all about to be y'all about to be real funny. I know. Camille, you better not say nothing. You bet not say nothing. This guy, Dennis, uh, keeps asking people to do CPR for a video. It's just weird. Okay. Well, Dennis, I don't know where you are, sir, but I'm going to tell you right now. I don't know what that means. We're not doing CPR here. Uh, don't pick up habits. 
Take it, uh, take it ASAP, okay? Yeah. Hold on, y'all. Damn, dude, there's so many damn bots in here. It's ridiculous. Uh, your schedule Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. What time, sir? Thanks. So it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 5.30. So if, if you guys don't ever see it, it's in my bio. You guys can check it out. Check it out my bio. Hugo, brother, him, Ella. Hey, look, don't laugh at me. Hey, that's crazy. Yeah, you were in the military. What does that even mean? I don't know what that means. Um, I think that makes, um, I think they make it hell on purpose to build resilience. So here's what they do. The whole point of nursing school is to weed people out. That's exactly why. Because if I just let anybody in, you know what it's going to do to the school's numbers? It's going to drop the school's numbers, right? And if you drop the school's numbers in regards to NCLEX pass rate, as well as graduation pass rate and, and school and, and class pass rate, then they're going to get on the board of nurses radar and they can lose their accreditation. That is why it's hard to get into nursing school because they keep people out. If you ain't trying to fucking be here, we don't want you here. That's why they put so many loopholes in there. I'm just lurking and learning. Uh, I want to eventually become an ER nurse. Okay, what's stopping you from doing it? Instead of it, instead of it being eventually, why can't you put you know steps forward to making that happen? Uh, will schools pick students with lower T scores? Uh, is it SID? Just depends on what your score is. They have a cutoff. They have a cutoff. If you don't meet that cutoff, then then you're not then you're not going to do it. It says uh, I've got to go have a good night. I really enjoy. It. Hey, I, Al, I appreciate you. It's like I got farm exam and I'm so scared, Mama. You ain't got nothing to be scared of. You ain't got. Hey, I'm telling you. A prefix, suffix, and an umbrella of where it is and the safety, the safety uh, implications. That's the biggest thing. It says, well, I am bamboo. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. Uh, have you ever heard of the black nurse of the black nurse collaborative? Um, I I haven't heard of that name specifically, but I, I'm a part of a couple of groups like, you know, black nurses rock and stuff like that. It says, what do you do in the military? So I'm a surgical tech in the military, but I'm also a master instructor. I taught in a surgical technology program for about three and a half years. I'm a trauma nurse instructor. I taught I taught uh, advanced burn life support. I taught pre-hospital trauma. So my last like eight years in the military have been uh, 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 teaching and education. So that's what I that's what I do. Um, but I'm, I am a surgical tech by trade. Uh, what do what do you do as a nurse coach? So everything, everything with a nurse coach is goes from if you're trying to get into nursing school, I got you. You want to know how to get into nursing school? I got you. You want to know the ways to, mo to to maneuver your way through nursing school so it's an easier, smoother transition? I got you. You need help on how to study for ATI, T's, HESI, whatever, Kaplan, whatever you have. I got you. You need help with NCLEX, which is my bread and butter. Uh, I got you. You need help understanding and collect style questions. I got you. But another thing is the mentorship afterwards, the mentorship afterwards, after school of how to navigate as a as a new grad and how to also I want everybody to realize just because you are an RN or an LPN and it's behind your name does not mean you have to work bedside. And that's what I talk about. That's what that's what that's that's, that's what nurse coaching is. You get this. You get the coaching. You get the mentorship. You get the one on one with me to where it's just like, hey. I had, I had somebody that I still mentor to this day uh, who had an issue at their uh, long term care facility where somebody tried to accuse him of something. And I was like, nope, this is what you need to do. You need to do this. You need to do this. You need to do this. Within a couple of hours, he had everything done. The next day they tried to do something. He was like, nope, got this. Now it's all resolved. And I was like, be aware, be aware. You always have to. I'm telling you right now, no one's going to care more about your license, ladies and gentlemen, than you. All right. Uh, it says in our transitions quarter, we have exams every week and we need to pass with 80 percent. That's good. I'm glad I'm Mel Melly. I'm glad that your school implemented that for you. Currently doing prereqs to get into an accelerator program. Is it Kai or Kai? Shout out to you. I did an accelerator program. It was 18 months. So I, I, I think that's a good thing. It says bamboo, bamboo, the plant, how it grows wild, uncontrolled. LOL. Uh, I was on question 60. Oh, you're on. OK, I got you. I was like, what? Final on Monday. So nervous. I needed 75 percent to pass. Is it uh, Akella on Kella on Kella? You got it. You got it. But uh, if you're super smart, get the great Wait, Hold on. Is it? But if you're super smart, get the grades, get in, but uh, can't cut it. Then what? So here's the thing. Is it a G uh, Cristiano? Um, how bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? You know, I could tell you the story about Michael Jordan getting cut from his sixth grade basketball team and then going in and then becoming one of the greatest basketball players to ever live. Then what? What if Michael would have quit? What if you decide how bad do how bad do you want to be a nurse? Hmm. I just got out. I just got out of the burn unit, uh, bro. I swear that shit was crazy. It's crazy. The burn unit was the very first nursing experience I ever experienced as an RN. And it was that's all I knew. And I loved I loved every bit of it, which I found you before before my tease today. Hey. Said it's okay. You found me now, and you don't only and you don't only have to have me for an exam. I do mentorship. I do all kinds of stuff. It says, "So are you a registered nurse?" Yes, Judy, I'm a registered nurse. 
uh, I need to go through school first. Hey, you do got to go through school first, but you got to put the, you got to put the steps in in order for you to get to school, right? Fort Campbell, where's that at? That's in Kentucky, right? Ew. Um, I can put I can put on my ADN, went straight to ER. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can get your ADN RN and then go straight to the ER for sure. Uh, if you are on certain meds that show up um, on a screen, how do employers deal with that? So they have different. So it depends on what your meds are. If your meds, if your meds that you're on impair you from making good sound decisions, probably not going to probably not going to work for you. It says, oh, duh, I see your credentials behind your name. Does dumb question on my part. No, Judy, it's fine. Usually I get people that come in here. What are your credentials? Oh, you know, you've only done this for this. Now you don't have any credentials to teach. And I'm just like, oh, OK, cool. Whatever. How much is the one on one diamond? You can go to my link in my bio and you can check that out. I have two different types. So I have the private one on one call, which is like a one time thing. Or you can do the coaching and the mentoring, which is a package thing. You can check that out. That link is in my bio. OK, so you can check those out. It says, how did you get your name? out there. I've been bedside for 12 years and looking for another area. Is it case leaves? So what do you mean exactly? Like, how did you get your name out there? It says, um, currently I'm a 10 month old and I don't. And if I, and if you don't pass all three classes in basic nursing, you what? Oh, I want it. It's my, Hey, uh, Cristiano, if you want it, then that ass better go and get it. Yeah. Delayed, never denied. No one's ever. And guess what? If you get denied from a school, take that ass to another school. Like how bad do you want to be it? You see what I'm saying? It says, I failed my first semester uh, uh, back or came back in September and I graduated and I passed with all A's. That's what I'm talking about. That's what that's called resilience. That's called resilience. You see what I'm saying? You get the obstacles there in front of you. They throw you off your path. You course correct and you keep it pushing. My anxiety uh, is on a thousand. That's cool. So is mine. Uh, I have to start over for the uh, uh, start from the from the start. You know, what's crazy. He's saying I have to start over from the start. I don't know how far you are in your, in your program, but guess what? If you got to start over from the start, you are about to see the same shit that you already saw. You see what I'm saying? So don't allow your anxiety to control you. All right. You already have control of the situation because you're about to go through the same stuff you already went through. You know what I mean? So I said, that's so true. I may not be the brightest, but I worked hard and I passed on my. So let me tell you something right now. You don't have to be the brightest person to be a nurse. However, you have to be a compassionate person to be a nurse and work bedside. You have to. The moment you lose your compassionness about working bedside, that's how you know it's time for you to go. All right. And no one cares about you getting all A's. What do you call a doctor that finished last in his class? Exactly. What do you call a nurse that finished last in their class? Exactly. So it doesn't that doesn't necessarily matter. You need to be smart enough to get through what you're getting through. And then all the hands on stuff will come. OK, uh, I just have to figure out how to study. Hey, I just want to let you know. So I actually help people and, and help them figure out how to study. Yeah. You got have, you have to figure out what type of learner are you? Are you auditory, kinesthetic, read, write? Are you um, a, a visual? Are you a combination of them? You know, once you figure out what type of learner that you are, then you know that you can get out there and you can make some stuff happen for yourself. Diamond says, thank you so much for everything. Diamond, you are welcome. Hey, like I said, if you need anything from me, you know where to find me up here. OK. Uh, it says, I, I like what you said, delayed, but not denied facts. You're never, you are never denied. Even if a motherfucker tell you a, hey, it, 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 it's impossible for it to happen. All right, bet. I'm about to figure it out. You see what I'm saying? There you go. Cristiano. I failed my first semester and then caught COVID and now I'm starting over because I want it. That's right. Because guess what? No one's going to fucking give it to you. No one's going to give you a degree. No one's going to give it to you. You got to go and fight it. You got to go fight for that 40, 50, hundred, two hundred thousand dollar piece of paper, depending on what school you went to. You know what I mean? I'm in my last semester of nursing school. Is it Re Rihanna? Rihanna? Is it Rihanna? Rihanna? Ponder replay. I got you, girl. Uh, I went to school uh, for personal support, pers- for personal support worker. And I'm and I am glad I did because it's super helpful for nursing. So, yeah, nursing, you got to have you got to have the compassion. The moment that you start to lose your your your, your empathy and your compassion for people, you can you got to you got to move around because then you're going to start making like you're going to start making bad decisions. And the last thing that you want to do is lose your license because of a, of, of, a, of a temporary impulse decision that you made. You know what I mean? So I'm in Australia, but my friend failed two years ago and redid it, uh, was deflated. That's definitely an Australian word to say in a sentence, but she nailed it the second time. I love that. Is it Siobhan? I love that. I love that. It says, how hard is nursing school? Nursing school is hard. All right, Rihanna, I got you. Uh, time is now time. It. Time and is now a nerd. Okay, I got you, Siobhan. I got you. Uh, It's so stressful if you fail one or two. Let me tell you something. Do you want to know? I can't even count on how many on how many hands on both hands and toes. 
I can't actually. On both hands, I can tell you how many times I, how many tests I failed while I was in nursing school. I can tell you. At least one. Like every, like at least one or two every semester. And I had a five semester school. You see what I'm saying? It does not matter. Though, guess what? Does your patient give a shit about how many tests you failed? Hey, did you fail? Did you fail the respiratory section for pharmacology? Oh, you did. Ugh. That's stupid. Oh, like no one's going to say that to you. No one's going to say that to you. You know what I mean? You got to bounce back from it. That's what you got to do. Compassion and resilience is the key. Thank you, Kevin. Your ma'am, you are welcome. People don't understand how much work goes into this degree. They don't. And people like I've seen people on TikTok talk about, you know, and here's the thing. They're talking about the ones that are out there, you know, that are talking about like, you know, I became a nurse to get a bag. I know you guys saw that one about that one girl who worked at Circle K and she lost her job, which in reality should have never lost her job because she's out here. It's kind of speaking facts, but people want to get butt hurt. Here's the thing is that with an, as a nurse, you can make money out here, but it doesn't have to involve bedside. I'm telling you right now, the side hustles that are out here are through the roof. And the degree is one of the hardest degrees to get in school. It is one of the hardest degrees to get in school. All right. Utilize it to the best of your ability. And don't let no motherfucker out here try to tell you about you and your degree and about, about what you did. You know what I'm saying? That's just like me going up to a mechanical engineer and telling him like, hey, boy, hey, bro, blah, 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 blah. And he gonna look at me like I'm like, he, like I lost my damn mind. I ain't gonna talk. I ain't, I ain't gonna tell him about that. You know what I mean? So uh, it's hard, but worth it. Uh, I am here uh, as an RN back doing my postgrad. OK, uh, didn't think I'd study again. So here's the thing. I did not want to go back to school. I did not And then here I, I, I had I had an older nurse who 45 years had her Ph.D. got into my DMs. And she was like kind of reminded me of like my dad or my like my grandma like just an older individual is saying like, so you're going to go back to school? No. So you're going to go back to school? Psh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> uh, I thought you could only repeat one class. I have no idea if that's true. Merce Jeff, let me tell you something. It all just depends. It depends on the school. It depends on the situation. It's on a case by case basis. Laura says I graduated May. Laura, you already know the deal. Check out the seven day NCLEX course. Yeah. Seven day NCLEX course link is in my bio. It's $97 and you get it for a lifetime. Just saying no one cares in a code what grade you got in school. That's facts. No one asks you. That's what I'm saying. No one gives a shit about that. Off topic. You're kind of cute. Girl, stop it. Do you see these eyeballs right now? Like they're all puffy and stuff. But first of all, I appreciate uh, your kind words. Is it in the Nazanin, Nazanin, did I say it right? I don't know if I said it right, but I appreciate the compliment. Thank you. And MSN is harder. It honestly, I heard the MSN is actually not harder because all the shit that they do to you in a in a in a LPN and and a and a, and a ADN and a BSN program, they don't do in an MSN program. You know, you already expect they already know what you know. You know what I mean? So that's just kind of how that goes. But shout out to all of y'all that are out here. Nazan is that you pronounce it perfectly? Okay, okay. So Nazan. N N Nizanin. Okay. Hey, I pride myself on wanting, I pride myself on wanting to uh, say people's names right, but if I already know, you already saw how I pronounce medicines, and I, I'd be messing them up. You know what I'm saying? It says, okay, thank you. Call me professor? Bitch. Stop it. No, I appreciate you. Uh, but hey, welcome, welcome. Hey, if you guys are finding value, make sure you guys check out uh, the links that I have in, the, in my bio. Hey, I got a freebie over there. I got a freebie over there, a 42 pager, you know, tips to help you conquer the NCLEX from lab values, you know, trigger words that you guys need to look out for and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? You guys go over there and check that out. All those links are in my bio. OK, but what other questions do you guys have? I actually got done with the live, the the, the questions like pretty fast today. Um, usually I'm right around an hour and I got them done probably about 10 minutes prior to that. So it says, um, let's see, Sh Chantel says I started off uh in F and D another class and now I have both B's in class uh classes done. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Uh I use your resources and I pass my in class. Stop it. That makes me happy. That makes me happy. All right. Wait, hey, when did you pass? Like when did you pass? Did, I, did we have this conversation before? Do you help tutor for nursing school or only in class? So Matthew I just started coaching where I do a private one-on-one -on -one tutoring call for people that are in nursing school as well as NCLEX. Uh, and those are those links are in my bio to answer your question. Uh, I'm going into pharmacology. Any tips? Hold on. I answer your question. That's what I'm talking about. Is it B 593 a all 112 of y'all right now? Give her her flowers. Congratulations. All right. So what I want for you to tell everybody right now is tell them about the course, tell them about the resources that you used, tell them how helpful, tell them if it was helpful or not, 
That way the people don't think I'm guiding you. And then also what's one tip that you could give to everybody in here that is going, that's graduating, that's about to take their NCLEX, so on and so forth. Like what can you give, right? So who somebody asked me specifically about farm. So you want to know, you know, prefix, suffix. The suffix is probably the, is by far the most important because that literally can you can categorize what dr what drug fits into what category. So we we'll go to we we'll go to cardiac meds. Let's say we have uh, depines like the N D I P D I P I N E right depines. Those are what we call calcium channel blockers, right? Those are um, cardiac meds. Right. You want to know the safety implications of, of calcium channel blockers. Right. Uh, you want to also take vital signs. OK, so you have to know what's the umbrella. OK, a cardiac med. All right. What is the family that it falls under the the, the depenes? Right. The calcium channel blockers are the depenes. And you need to know what are the safety implications in regards to giving that medication. That's how that's every medication. Think about it like that. And you and, and you'll and you'll never you'll never you'll never go wrong. All right. But hey, congratulations to her. Congratulations, her. Is it a tequila? Tequila. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate you. What other questions do you guys have? Somebody said something. Um, uh, any tips for patho? So patho was actually one of my favorite. Um, my favorites. Um, flashcards works out really well because pa all patho is is memorization, like knowing what the knowing the disease processes and how they affect the body. Right. So we start talking about diabetes. What does it do? We start talking about acute renal failure. What does that do? OK, it starts off with what portion of the kidney that starts off with the failure. What are we going to be looking at in regards to potassium? What are we going to be looking at for in regards to metabolic alkalosis or acidosis? Like that's how you have to learn that. OK, uh, what was uh, what was the toughest course for you back in nursing school? It was fundamentals and I'm going to fund or foundations. And I'll tell you why I had already like eight years of medical of overall medicine experience as a hospital corpsman, as my two deployments as a surgical tech and as an instructor. Right. So when I go into being a nurse, I am fighting the grain. I am against the grain. Right. My nursing, my nursing instructors are telling me this. I'm like, nah, that ain't true because in the real world, it ain't true. So I had to turn off corpsman and I had to turn off Navy in order for me to pick up and relearn everything. That's exactly what I had to do. And um, I almost failed fundamentals. I almost failed it. And you needed a 75 or higher. And I got a 78. And that's the closest I've ever gotten. Like the rest of my classes, they were all like 82 uh, percent and above. Right. I failed funds by that's terrible. That's absolutely fucking terrible. That's just like me when I and then, and then when I was doing advancement, I failed by two points. And then I got my degree, which gave me two points. That's a whole nother story. This is so true. I definitely got to get out of that. You do. You have to get out of that mindset. You have to get out of it. I have to keep turning off my EMT brain to turn on my nursing brain for school. You have to because the scope of practice is different. My man, Trey, what's up, brother? It says uh, good to finally meet, sir. Hey, you missed it, man. I had a thousand people up in here. We'll talk about it later on on James's live. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. It says literally listening to this doing fundamentals remediation. Hey, hey, savage mama, you know what the deal is. You know, you got to get you got to get your learning on. So here. So here is the thing. Here's the thing that I'm going to tell everybody that's in here. I'm going to give you guys a nugget. This is usually what I do uh, when I very first start to coach people out is know what type of learner that you are. Let's just say I'll use I'll use um, I'll use Savage Mama as an example. Let's just say you are uh, an auditory learner, right? Not you can't put a book in front of me. If you put a book in front of me, I promise you that's the fastest way that you will put me to sleep. Well, there's other ways, but that's one of the fastest ways, right? Um, so I am a big auditory and visual person. So that's how I study. I find notes. I find PowerPoints and then I go along with it. That's exactly why the seven day NCLEX course with the content is exactly why I have it the way that I have it. All right. I have it to where we go through the lecture together. You listen to me. If you didn't hear it, go back and listen to it again. If you didn't hear it. And then as you go through it, you're taking notes. You're going to be like, oh, he said that. I didn't hear him say that. Oh, he did that. I didn't hear him say that. That's exactly how it worked. That was a combination of things that worked for me. Notes. However, I didn't write the notes. I Like right now, we go into the seven day NCLEX course. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to show you guys what it looks like right now. I'm going to show you guys what the course looks like right now. If you guys are finding value, make sure you guys smash that like button. But of course, I got to get up in here because I wasn't prepared to get in here yet. Right. So let me see. Let me let me answer you guys this question. This is like, well, the, well there's other way. Look, a is wild out here. Jennifer, I, thank you for the flower. I appreciate you. I don't. Uh, don't know if you remember me, but I finished my first semester with a Lexi. Of course, I remember you. 
shout out shout out to Quizlet, right? There you go. It says intro to nursing had uh had an F. Now I got a high B. See, that's what I'm saying. You're going around your, your second go around. It's just like, cool. I already know what to expect when I get up in here. And then you're like, hey, I ain't about the games. I got an F. Now I got a B. You know what I'm saying? You better get a B because you done already synced it. You done already synced it. You know what I mean? So now you're going in there even more prepared than you were before. And that's what it's all about. Right. It's about knowing for looking at your past failures, looking at your past failures. Cutting the fat, trimming the fat, auditing yourself, and then moving forward with the improvements from that. You know what I'm saying? Call it like a, like a debrief or something like that. You know what I mean? So uh, let me see. It says, well, YouTube and PowerPoints the teachers gave us. Yeah, you know what's crazy is when I had a teacher tell me YouTube, I was just like, uh, can't you just tell me? She's like, uh, no. I was like, damn, Gina. Like, really? So that's how it was. Um, but here, here we go. I'm going to turn this camera around real quick. We've been on here for an hour and a half already. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think everybody can see that. Let me back that up and let me, <laughs> let me back that up. Kevin, you're so immature, right? So hold on. So this is what the course looks like on the inside. I know, see if you guys can see that. Okay. So the seven day NCLEX course, like this is what I'm telling you. This is what you get. You get it for a lifetime. So let's just say one of the biggest portions that people have a problem with is pharmacology, right? We talked about pharmacology, right? It says, I cannot stand a look it up as to look. I don't ever, I don't ever, I do that, but I don't do that. If that makes sense. Like if you like, if it's an answer that you're supposed to know, it, it, honestly, let me stop. It's on a case by case basis, right? So here we go. So this is where I'm talking about dosage calculation right here. If you guys can see that it's a download, it's the exact PowerPoint, the exact PowerPoint that I'm going over and it's telling you how to break things down, so on and so forth, all that good jazz. Right. And so as I'm saying little nuggets, you write them out just like that. Right. And this is what dosage calculations. Right. So let's go to another one. We were just talking about cardiac meds, right? So we're talking about cardiac meds. OK. And like I said, you get this for a lifetime. That link is in my bio. OK. It's the one that says seven day NCLEX course. So we're with cardiac meds. Listen, look, here's the intro. And then we start talking about cardiac meds. Look, ACE inhibitors. Uh, you got your ARBs, your beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, statins all the way. Right. And then we go into detail about them. Right. So get the PowerPoint. That's the type of learner that I am. And that's the type of learner that I, I, I tried to bestow this upon everybody else that's trying to get their learn on. You know what I mean? I don't want to bestow this on somebody who's trying to get their learn on. And in reality, that's what it's about. OK. And so also inside the course, you know, how do you crit like do, do you do you think critically? You know what I'm saying? That's what the NCLEX wants. Critical thinking. And clinical judgment, clinical thinking and apply it to make a clinical judgment. OK, and that's what you do. Do you think and this is a 22 minute video, 22 minutes, right? None of my videos are longer than 30 minutes. You want to know why? As somebody who has who is an instructor who has taught formally on the podium, who the hell wants to sit at who the hell wants to sit in a room for an hour and listen to me run my mouth? I mean, unless you really want to just sit there and, run, and, and gawk at me. I mean, I've had people do that before. It's actually kind of it's kind of distracting. But anyways, so, yeah. Uh, and then we have the rules on the NCLEX. And then this is a hey, this is probably one of the biggest ones right here is this is the new generation NCLEX review. Y'all, I hey, there are case studies in here. There are case studies in here. You see what I'm saying? The, the one the stuff that y'all need to know is here, right? Like this one right here. Let me see. There it is. Like there's a case study that's right there for y'all. You know what I mean? So as we go through this, you guys take notes. You guys can do all this. And then I break it down. We talk about rationales, tells you which ones are wrong, why they are wrong. And then the ones that are right, select all that apply. Don't forget that select all that apply are partial credit, right? And then we have our closed, our closed, our drop down, right? I'm going to show you guys. That's what that looks like, right? Pick your answer. You know what I mean? So that's what's inside the course. Also, there's bow tie ones up in here. And then, of course, there's another tab down here called make shit happen. Right. But then you'll see with that one, that's a special little gift for people that are already in the course. OK, but anyways, that's what that's what you get. And that's why I have the course laid out the way that I have it laid out. If you guys are finding value, Carolina, hey, go ahead and tell everybody. Tell them right now. Tell them right now. Tell them right now, Carolina. Tell them what you told me in the in the in the DMs. All right. If you guys are finding value, make sure you guys smash that like button. Make sure you guys share and make sure you guys follow. What other questions do you guys have? That's right, y'all. Carolina hit me up last night or early this morning, I think, 
um, and told me that she passed her exit Hesse. She said that these lies were super helpful for her. And now she's on her way to take her freaking NCLEX, a graduation and then NCLEX, right? So what we do here and what goes on over here in this course, it works, y'all. It works. That's what other people say. It works. This isn't my shit. This is y'all shit. Like, I don't, if, if, if I got no kind of feedback, none whatsoever, I promise you I wouldn't even do this. There would be no point. There'll be no point for me to do it because there's nobody out here listening. But you got your own peers that are in the same portion of the journey as you. That's trying to get over that next line. Tequila says, do you help with NCLEX? Yes, I do. I do help with NCLEX. NCLEX is my bread and butter. Hey, I failed NCLEX three times. Hey, if you're new here, I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey. Okay. So I failed NCLEX three times. This is my bread and butter. Okay. It says, I want to utilize uh, through my whole term. Um, I have six terms left. Chantel, what are you talking about? You're talking about the course you have a, hey, that court, this course is for a lifetime. You have lifetime access. It's not on, um, it's not on a subscription or anything like that. You get everybody that buys it. Like at some point it's going to go to subscription, but even when it goes to subscription, this ain't going away. Y'all, y'all will have that. When I say you have it forever, you have it forever. Mom Angel says, I need your help, please. Hey, check my links out. So if you guys are looking for like one-on-one -on -one private tutoring, if you're looking for a package deal to do the NCLEX, like coaching and mentoring and stuff like that. I also have those pack. Those are up in here. You guys can check them out. Those links are in my bio. Tequila, uh, Tequila said I failed once. I under and I understand. I understand where you guys are coming from in regards to that. And you're in Florida because with Florida, you can only take it three times before you have to get remediated. Time to go. Time to go. What? Time to go drinking. Hey, all right now. Oh, you said you got that graduation party, I think. Right. Hey. Go out there. Have a good time. Be safe. Don't do what don't. Hey, don't do nothing. I wouldn't do. You know what I'm saying? No, I say, hey, go out there and have fun. All right. But don't forget, you still got you still got an end game in plan. You got an end game. You still got that NCLEX. All right. So don't forget that. But go have a good time, please. I'm I'm uh, I'm really tired of this study. So, like I said, check that out. That link is in my bio. If anybody needs coaching or wants to have a, a call with me or anything like that, you guys can go over there and check that out. It's free. Uh, taking NCLEX PN on the 20th and I'm so nervous. That's OK for you to be nervous. All right. It's OK for you to be scared, but you better go and do it scared. OK, because let me tell you something right now. Nobody ever got anywhere without doing something that they were scared to do, but still doing it and accomplishing their goal. OK, Francis said, just work 16 hours, just work 16 hours with me in one CNA with 40 residents. Francis, you must are in a long term care facility. I know that people have to work there. I know people have to work. There. I know that work is needed there. But man, let me tell you, sometimes that's sh that shit is wild. That's wild. And it's gro it's grossly unsafe, grossly unsafe. Hey, so if you guys are new here, welcome. We do NCLEX questions. They're done already. We do those like 530 and then we do an ask me anything. All right. Um, what questions do you guys have for me? I think I've answered a good a good amount of you guys' questions. But what other questions do you guys have for me? Today is Friday. So I'll, I want everybody to have a really good, safe weekend out there. Um, and then, hey, the end of the semester is coming and then it's Christmas break. Hey, but during Christmas, I'm telling you right now, we don't stop working. Last year, I coached a guy. He graduated and he will. He talked to me all through Christmas. All through Christmas, New, now New Year's, New Year's Eve, he talked to me in the morning. New Year's Day, he talked to me. Uh, or uh, I'm sorry, Christmas Eve, that day of Christmas Day and Eve, we talked, right? And then we talked during New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. And then on the fifth, he took his exam. I studied with him for two weeks. Two weeks, he and I grinded it out. And then he passed on his first time. Now he's in his bachelor's degree program. You see what I'm saying? So it's possible. You got to you got to you got to dedicate the time. You got to put the work in. Uh, I said, ain't no way, Francis. What hell? Uh, what helped you through fundamentals? Um, honestly, what helped me through all of nursing school, not just fundamentals, was finding my tribe. And you got to think. You got to find like just because you're in nursing school doesn't mean that. You guys have the same destination in regards to getting your license and, and work and being a nurse, but it does not mean that you have the same mindset. And so it took me a while for me to find the mindset type of people in my cohort. Eighty nine percent women. This occupation is I am. I was out of one hundred and thirty people in our cohort. There were a, like eleven or fourteen men. And so here I am trying to find, you know, where trying to get in where I fit in with these women. And the one thing I'll tell you is getting into is having a group. That's what I tell you, Savage Mom. Having a group, you three other people. Split the work up 25 percent. You do 25. They do the other 25, 25. Right. And once you do that, put your notes together 
and then you all and then you have a complete study package study package right there you did 25 percent of the work but you reap 100 percent of the benefits i started at 31 what what does your age have to do with anything your age has nothing to do with you doing anything at all period your age has nothing to do with it I graduated nursing school. I started nursing school when I was 31 and I graduated when I was. Yeah, I started nursing school when I was 31 and I graduated when I was 32. You see what I'm saying? So it says no 31 people in my cohort. Oh, I thought you were talking about telling me like Lord, but I was on a, I was in an online program. So they had the online people. So they had three separate little cohorts. So they had the online people for military and then online people that were regular. And then they had the actual face to face, but they had us all together under, under the same like classes and stuff like that. In total, it ended up being like 130 people. It says, uh, we now have 13. Yep. That's all it is. Weeding them out, weeding them out. If you can't hack a, a, if you can't hack it, they're going to get rid of you. But best believe the school already acquired that money. So that's one, that's one thing I'm gonna tell you, acquire your tribe. It says, yeah, you lose a lot of people in nursing school. My my LPN program lost so many as well. Yeah, absolutely. When I remember when I even when I was in like in my co in my online portion, we started off with 60 and only 30, only 31 graduated just out of the online. So half of the people that started quit, either quit. One girl was just like, fuck this. I don't need this. I already have a public health degree. One dude just failed out, just disappeared. Uh, another chick was just like, no. I quit because this is dumb. I'm going to do Airbnb with my husband. Like, it's wild. It's wild. Wild, I tell you. It's crazy. So what other questions do you guys have out there? I'm going to hang out here probably for about another five to ten minutes. I I, I love the engagement. I love how, how we're doing our back and forth. So how, so how can I continue to serve you? How can I help you? Um, Nursey, it's uh, it is hard to it is hard. It's very it is very it is. That's what people were just like. Nursing school is easy. I like you a lie. That's why when you go to nursing school your first semester, I'm going to be like, hey, I call that that I call it humbling that ass period because nursing school, you think, you know, but you have no idea. You know, it's kind of like, you know, the diary back on MTV. Am I showing my age? You know what I mean? But nursing school is hard and it's meant to be hard because it's meant to keep people out. The NCLEX, think of the NCLEX as a rite of passage, right? It's a rite of passage. Everybody has to go through it. Now, think about those people who were trying to be fake nurses. And trying to skim their way, like in Florida and Georgia, and they were trying to buy their licenses and, you know, flukes in the system. Bro, you didn't go through the same fucking struggles that I did. You thought you could just pay a school, get a degree, get a license, and then come out here and give fucking Tylenol to somebody who has end-stage renal failure? The fuck are we doing out here? You know what I mean? So that is why the schools are the way that they are, which entail when they do that, that's another reason. Another reason. I didn't say the reason, but another reason. Um, for the nursing shortage, it'll always, and the nursing shortage are all, but you, you can't pump out enough nurses without the accreditation. Like I'm at, if the accreditation went away, oh my God, I can't even imagine the unsafe amount of thing, the unsafe amount of things that would happen out here. Uh, and you still learn so much once you, uh, once you graduate school, to be honest, the first year is a big wake up. Yeah. So you, you will definitely, your first year of nursing is you go from doing stuff in the, in, in the classroom to doing stuff on real people. To where you are solely responsible for it. You know what I mean? So, and then you go through imposter syndrome. How did I get here? Why am I here? I'm not good enough to be here. I should have never did this, blah, blah, blah. But it takes time. It takes time. Is it really a financial freedom lifestyle or when you finally pass and find that good job? So, yes and no. Um, remember who put you on. I'm just going to put who I'm just going to put you know, like who put. I'm just going to put remember, right? So you know I'm talking to you. Financial freedom can can most definitely come from that, but it's not necessarily, once again, it's not about the job. It's about your mindset and how you can use that license to acquire financial freedom. But working at a fucking job won't do it. The NCLEX was easier than ATI. The NCLEX is, the NCLEX is easier than ATI, than HESI, than Kaplan. It's meant to be that way. I ask till I understand. That's right. You ask questions until you get your questions answered. Now, if you're asking questions just to be an asshole, then, you know, and don't be don't be surprised by the response. OK, Matthew says, what's good, brother? Pass the math on my HESI. Failed two parts. Taking the uh, the T's for a different school. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about, Matthew. We don't stop. We don't stop. It's just a delay in the process. You're not your process wasn't denied. Even if it's denied, hey, appeal that shit. And we go, we keep going. Right. 
It says, it says, it says, Shelby says, is it? Uh, I take my NCLEX this month and I'm nervous. Wait, what happened, Shelby? I forgot what I said. Uh, Sergio says, if paramedics were licensed, the argument of skill set would be interesting. You're right. It would be. It very much would. Because here's the thing about paramedics is that you work under. You already know the Sergio, if you're a paramedic, I, I probably I shouldn't have to say this, but I'm going to say this for people who don't know, is that as a paramedic, you work under the direct license of a medical physician. You work under the direct license of a doctor. And so, yeah, can you intubate? Yes. Can you do pressors? Yes. Can you do RSI meds? Absolutely. Because you're doing it and you're skilled, the hands-on skills, as well as the knowledge in order for you to do it. Now, you could argue to try to do that, but ultimately, it's the why. It's at the level that you are at now and not understanding the why at the level of a medical doctor, if that makes sense. Not saying that you can't perform it, and, we, and, I, know, and, I, and I know that's what we're talking about, but that's what it is. It's not about the how. It's all about the why and then the intricacies of that why. And then it, be, and then it becomes a liability issue. Oh, you don't got a license. Oh, not as a doctor. And you're doing what? Mm -mm. So that way, when you fuck up, they're going for the doctor. Oh, they're going to come for you, too. But, you know, you know the deal. It said, how is it easier? Because of the format, the format, Shelby says, how is the NCLEX easier than the uh, than the uh, than HESI and, uh, and ATI, Kaplan, and all those other ones? And the main reason is because of how the questions are formatted. NCLEX is very straightforward. The studying stuff is what does all the loopholes and throws all the extra stuff in there because it wants you to foster critical thinking, understanding application and analysis to make a clinical judgment. That's why. That is why. I remember put you on perfectly said, okay, I'm glad, I'm glad. How is it easier? Shelby, I just said it. You ain't got to yell at me. Beverly, Miss, Ma uh, I mean Beverly, uh, that's my sister's name. Miss Barbara, ma'am, how are you? Uh, Tease is only overall 50% needed for LVN, okay? Hey, Matthew, only thing you got to do is get in, bro. That's it. That's all you got to do. Uh, Savage Mama says LPN or RN. What do you mean? You're talking about for me, like which one am I? Am I an LPN or am I RN? Kayla, thank you for the follow. Uh, I am an RN. It says I'm not doing great on Kaplan's, but uh, like 80s on U World. All right, Shelby. So, man, like I wish I had you in front of me. That way I could just be like, let's let, like let's go through some stuff together. Right. Because I could tell you I was actually back. I was actually good on both of those. Like I did Kaplan and I was getting, I mean, I'm sorry, I was doing uh U world and I was getting sixties and seventies and I took it three. I used U world three times, all three times I took my exam among with other things and I still failed with U world. And then the moment I used Kaplan, I was scoring in the sixties, in the sixties and the high fifties in the sixties. And I passed in like an hour and five minutes. So it all just depends. Sergio says, whenever people bring that discussion in what people forget, uh, I just want you to say it for everyone. Oh, okay. No, I, Sergio, listen. Hey, look, hey, hey, we're vibing on the same wavelength. I understand. I understand. Look, there are things There are things that I've done under the direction of a medical doctor when I was deployed that obviously you can't do what I can't do here as a nurse or as a search tech or anything like that, right? So, you know, situation, you know, precedes itself. And, but you already know back here in the States, it's all about who can do what based off of what credentials and their scope of practice, because it's a liability. Everybody and their mama wants to sue somebody out here. Is the LPN NCLEX hard? Yes, it is hard, especially if you don't study for it. What's the best route to go? It depends on you, Savage Mama, what your pocket's looking like. LPN is a little bit more of a, a, a it's a little bit less expensive than an RN program, but it depends on what your pockets look like. You can become an LPN and then go work for a hospital and then have the hospital pay for you to go get your bachelor's and then you not pay a dime after that. You know, there's different met, there's different ways of you doing it. It says, what did you what did you go to nurse? Where did you go to nursing school? Uh, do you have a bachelor's? I do have a bachelor's degree. I have a bachelor's in nursing and I went to Texas A&M in Corpus Christi. Uh, Maya Elaine says, I have failed my NCLEX 12 times. I don't know what to do. Any suggestions? Well, I was about to say a really, really smart comment. However, Obviously, there's something that you're not doing that's correct. And I don't usually do this, but I would recommend that you most definitely get a mentor and get a coach. I do mentoring and coaching. The one, I'm coaching one young lady right now who is an LPN who failed her NCLEX 11 times. And she is killing. She is killing her studying process once we got her once we got her all together. And she takes her NCLEX on the 21st and she's about to rock that shit. So I really think that you, I really think that you need some one-on-one. -on -one. I think you need some one-on-one. -on -one. It says, who is a paramedic watching and thinking of NCLEX and nursing? You, Sergio. <laughs> uh, is it dumb to bridge over from LPN? I like, or LPN, I like the bridge format, three-day classes. Uh, no, it's not dumb. Not dumb at all. It's actually, a, it's a tactical move that a lot of people do. What's the best place to live and work as a nurse? It depends. 
It depends on you and what you like. Like people love, uh, you'll hear people say, hey, best place to get paid, California. You ain't never seeing me go to California. Hell, I mean, I'll go there, but I never like live there permanently. I go there to visit or, you know, stay there for a vacation. But most definitely, um, it all just depends on you. I live in Texas. I love Texas. This is where I'm from. I just, I'm not from my hometown, but if you like, it all just depends. You can live here. You can live in your home state and go and go travel. You know, you could fucking sell your house and get an RV and then travel across the world and just do travel nursing the whole time. You know, what departments do you work in? I've worked in uh, the burn ICU, a medical ICU. I floated down to med surge into a, 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 a neuro ICU, as well as I've worked in the PACU and I worked in the operating room. Man, it says, where did you get? I already answered that. Uh, did you ever use your best? Grade? Yeah, I actually. Uh, nope, Nick. I actually. um suggest uh, your nurse grade to people that are in nursing school. So I recommend it. Shabba says, do you think two weeks max is enough time to study for the NCLEX if I study if I study five to six hours? So Shelby, are you still in school? So if you're still in school, I think that I think that that would be OK as long as you're able to retain the information. You know, and the one thing that you don't want to do is that you don't want to burn this muscle out, a.k.a. your brain. It's a machine. You don't want to you don't want to short circuit this. All right. LPN program. LPN program is hard. LPN program is hard. RN's program is hard. What do you think? It's not meant to be easy. You got to put in the work. Are they both hands on programs? Yes. Uh, I'm going to stick with you world and Mark clinic lectures. Okay, show. I just called you shell like we're fucking friends. Uh, first of all, Shelby, we are friends. You came here and now we're friends. I'm a hands on learner. Okay. Just like everybody else. Sergio says 2025. I'm planning to use my GI bill. Okay. Now, Sergio, now it's making all sense. Uh, after coming back from my deployment, uh, I have to. I am. Okay. Sergio, hey, you, hey, we should talk, man. You should. We should talk. Uh, what's, what branch of service are you in? Combat? Oh, you're a combat medic? Okay, that already tells me. Uh, from the Army, what route did uh, should I take? Sergio, we'll talk. We'll talk about that. Do I recommend bridging? Yeah, why not? Uh, med- a Medicaid. Hey, for all my paramedics that are out there, Miss Medicaid over here, she got some stuff going on, you know, with her ebooks and stuff like that. Hey, Kate, I saw that you dropped uh, a new one. So shout out to you. Uh, uh, how, uh, how for your one-on-one? So my one-on-ones are I have one on ones and I also do like, you know, it's a it's a like a session by session, you know, coaching, uh, uh, tutoring or a private call. And that's up there you can check the link out in my bio. OK, uh, CRNA or not. Nah, depends on you. Or if you're talking about me, I'm not going CRNA and I'm not going MP. Uh, I made my peace with that a long time ago. And that's why I decided I want to go education. I want to do education because I like doing this. I like doing this uh, CRNA. Um, I had a I had a. a, a an epiphany, like an awakening when I was working in the ICU and the things that I saw and I did, it, it could be a long story, but nurse practitioner, no, not my vibe. CRNA, no, not my vibe anymore. I like to be here. I like to teach. I like to mentor. I like to coach. I like to guide. I like to do, that's exactly why I do this. That's exactly why I created my, that's exactly why I have my coaching. That's exactly why I have my course. I love, I love, I literally am obsessed with doing this. And if you're not obsessed with your job, the moment that it does not become fun for you, it's time for you to move around. Listen to me when I tell you that. Uh, Chloe says, how do you feel about nurses going to be an MP with less than a year of experience? So Chloe, most MP programs will require you to have at least a year. And here's the thing. Go. Go. My feel, how I feel about it don't got shit to do about what you want to do for yourself. Here's one thing I will say, though. Don't number one, don't don't you ever forget where you where you come from. And number two, if you're going to go that route, take it with stride, learn and then be the best fucking NP that you can be. It says perhaps they should check uh, the NCLEX. Perhaps they should check the NCLEX results to see where she did well and where they didn't. Exactly. She can do that, too. So you can get your NCLEX performance and stuff like that. You can get your NCLEX performance. But hey, if you failed multiple times. And if I tell you to look at your performance, the next thing that's going to come, you're going to be like, I don't know if I failed in multiple spots. I don't know where to start. Well, you know, that all just depends on you, too. It says, what are your thoughts on direct entry MSN? I actually had this question earlier. I like them because with direct entry, you still have to go through the nursing program and then you still have to take the NCLEX. If you don't put it this way, if you don't pass the NCLEX and if you're in a direct entry MSN program, you cannot progress through the rest of your program. You can't do it. Are you interested in uh, are you interested in your MP? Nope. I think I already answered that. Where can I sign up for your tutoring for you? That is up here in the link in my bio. And, it, and once you go to the link in my bio, it'll, it'll be in a link tree and the link tree will have all the links that are there. What's the difference between LPN and RN scope of practice and scope of practice and the school? 
So you get you you, you do more of the uh, you have more you have more of the research. You have way more of the research. Uh, you ha- and you have a lot more classes and it's the scope of practice. That's what it is. It, 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 the biggest thing is the scope of practice. Uh, pa- Shelby says uh, to pass. Shelby, I don't even know what you said. You got to write it all again for me. I'm sorry. It says true labor and delivery, delivery, delivery yeah, labor and delivery nurse and could see myself and and not see myself anywhere else. That's and that's what's up. If you know where you belong, stay there. If you know that you don't want to fucking wear bedside anymore, baby, don't stay your ass bedside. If you have a toxic relationship, aka, obviously, if you have a toxic relationship with anybody, but if you have a toxic relationship with your organization or your leadership, or if you, if this mean girl bullshit that's happening in your listen. Don't you fucking stay there. No job is worth your mental health. Listen to me. This is years of therapy talking to y'all. Do not fucking stay there. You are the CEO, the chief executive officer. You are the president. You are the emperor. You are the fucking king of said license that you get. There's so many other things that you could do with that license. Okay. So trust and believe me when I tell you this is, and Kevin is amazing. Uh, Anything RN, he is amazing resource. Kate, girl, you know, I appreciate you. It says, hello, how are... It says, what or how can I retain information? Brandy, that's studying. That's studying. You need content. You need questions and answers. And you need rationales. So RN is deeper than, uh, than pathology. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like wait, wait until you start to understand the, the research development behind, uh, behind um, you know, therapeutic communication. Everybody thinks ca- therapeutic communication is all about how you respond, but there's a psyche behind it. You know what I mean? Kate says, do you think it's fair for medics and LPNs to be in the same bridge program uh, to RN. I do because, because you got to think in order, in order for a medic, AKA slash, you know, um, you have, you have to display certain things before you can get into that program. I'll give you an example with the school that I went to, they had a military to RN program or a veteran to RN program, but you had to have been a 68 whiskey. You had to have been a combat medic, an air force medic, or you have to be a hospital corpsman. You have to be one of the three. If you don't have it, if you don't do, if you, because they won't take you. So it's all about based off of what you bring to it, because guess what? In the end, Kate, you're all going to be learning the same shit. Jazz says going to, I'm going to start a direct entry program and we'll definitely be interested in your NCLEX help. Jazz, I'm telling you right now, NCLEX, seven day NCLEX course. It's up there. It's up there, $97, and it's for a lifetime. You're going to get all the updates. If you want that, that's cool. I'm always going to be here. I'm going to be on TikTok until y'all don't want me here. That's exactly what I'm going to tell y'all. You know, And I'm always going to have all these different offers out there for y'all, for whatever you guys want. Uh, Chloe says, thank you. Many people say I should wait, but I know I always wanted to be a provider, new grad, by the way. Go. Absolutely. Don't fucking wait. Don't. Let me tell you something, Chloe. None of them are putting anything in your pocket. None of them are feeding you. And let me tell you right now, those motherfuckers will throw you under the bus faster than anybody. So go and do you get your year of experience and go and do you. OK, uh, Shelby says, Kevin, I don't know you, but I like you, ma'am. I like you, too. Uh, I'll look into your tutoring session. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Go over there and check those out. Jazz says, nice. Hey, so what other question do you guys have? Hey, I stayed over longer than I said I was going to stay over. All right. I think I'm going to hang out. I got I'll do another two minutes, y'all. Another two minutes. Another two minutes. Shelby, I know I, 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 know, I don't even feel like I answered your question. I'm so sorry because it was kind of all over the place and I was trying to catch up. It says definitely no hate to other RNs, but I feel like the best RNs had prior experience in other professions. That's true. But Kate, let's think about it like this. Remember, how I think we were talking about this before. Think about what we like to call manning. Right. So, you know, how or staffing. Think about it like that. If I start to segregate these programs more than they're already segregated. Right. If I start to segregate these courses more than they're already segregated, the chances of us keeping up with the numbers in regards to having nurses out in the profession are going to decrease as well. They're going to continue to decrease. So we don't everybody. Everybody's coming from a different place in their life. And just because let me tell you something right now, just because they come in with the experience like you and I going into a program doesn't mean that they're going to have bad experience. Honestly, the best people to learn are people who don't know and learning for the first time, unlike somebody like us who have bad fucking habits. Why do you think I almost failed fundamentals my first semester? You know what I mean? So granted, it's good for you to have that experience, but not everybody has that awakening like we do or like we did when or when I did when I was 19. You know what I mean? Not everybody has that awakening. Everybody had everybody comes into their journey at their own 
at their own point. So uh, be strong says you are awesome. I wish I knew you four years ago when I was taking my NCLEX. Look, I wish I'd had this mindset when I took my NCLEX the first time in 2018. Right. So like 2018, twice, 2019, 2020, four times I took my exam and I and, and, you know, we out there, we out there conquering it. We out there making moves. We out there doing bigger and better things. And that's what it's all. And that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Kate said, what did you say, Kate? It says, I find it crazy that they put RN students with 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 me, the ER. Uh, like, I mean, I think I can teach. That's the thing. It's just like in the medical field, everybody's a teacher and it should be that way, in my opinion. It's like. You should be able to teach what you know. And if you don't know it, be like, hey, I don't know. I learned so much from when I was an RN. I learned so much, like especially about wound care, from an LPN. And they were fantastic. They were fantastic. You know what I'm saying? So you got to think, when you have these boot nurses that are going in there, you are the corporate knowledge. You are the subject matter expert. And, and, and the one thing I don't, and I'm not saying that you do, but the one thing I don't want anyone to do is to take that knowledge for granted. OK, Shelby says, if I got a 62 on my Kaplan predictor, but 80s on you world to continue with studying, do you think I'll be OK? Shelby, I do think that you'll be OK. I think that you will be you'll be spot on. All right. But you also need to incorporate breaks in there. You also need to audit your 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 your, your time management. You also need to make sure you stay on that calendar. OK, because if you're still in school, which I'm assuming that you still are. You're already preparing right now. And then when you're going to graduate and then it's going to probably take anywhere from two to four weeks for you to get your uh, uh, authorization to test, maybe earlier than that. And then take the fucking test on the first thing that you see. And it's already there. It's school's already there overlapping with the NCLEX. And now you take the NCLEX, you pass and you're done. You see what I'm saying? So I think that you'll be okay, Shelby. Uh, Shelby says, I'm going to take my NCLEX end of this month or mid January. Yeah, exactly. Be strong. It says we can all learn from it. exactly. It said, I wish more RNs knew the scopes of medics. So here's the thing. It's just like not every, once again, like Kate, Kate, we understand your passion, Kate. And, and, I, and I and I think it's commendable. Right. It's just like, you know, you want to know more. Right. Outside of your scope of practice. But, you know, obviously you can't perform outside your scope of practice because you don't have the credentials and the license to do so on your own, at least. Um but not everybody's going to have that same passion. You got to think nursing for nursing for people is a job. It's a profession that they have, but it's a job. I'm coming here, taking care of this patient. You know, I ain't kill nobody. I do X, Y and Z, you know, and I go home. That's how it is. Not everybody's going to have that passion. And once again, if you try to segregate people from that passion or if that passion starts to dwindle while they become nurses, there's nothing that you could do about that. Uh, Savage uh, mom says, I've been told by so many RNs, they learn so much from. Yes, 100 percent. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, what uh, Chloe says, what's your biggest tip of being a good nurse as a new grad? Being a sponge, being a sponge. And here's the thing about being a good nurse, being a, number one, being a good nurse. The first thing I'm going to tell you is to advocate for yourself. No one is going to advocate better than you. For you. Than you. Does that make sense? If you guys are finding value, smash that like button. All right. Um, be a sponge. Ask tons of questions. If you're ever put in an uncomfortable situation, speak up because I'm telling you right now, these hospitals will put you these hospitals, these managers, all these people will put you in uncomfortable positions where they're like, oh, well, you just got to do it. Nope, you don't got to do it. All right. And then also know, know your rights. Know your rights. OK, never abandon. a Please never abandon a patient. Once you respond, hey, once you accept responsibility of a patient, they're yours until you give them to somebody else. All right. So understand you're going to have some really shitty days. You're going to go through imposter syndrome badly. You're going to have it. I have it. I had it. Um, I, you know, everybody has it because, you know, you start to think, oh, what am I doing here? I'm stupid, blah, blah, blah. But give it time. Give it time and you'll progress through it. So should I sign up uh, as soon as I can? Yes, Shelby. You said Shelby, you are an, a, 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 ner a nervous little Nancy over there, aren't you? So Shelby, you're ma'am. I think that you're going to be OK. Uh, I always talk so highly of paramedics and others. They are insanely smart and brave. Much respect. Absolutely. So what, what's your opinion on utilizing medics more in the ER uh, as nurses? Once again, it's all back to the scope of practice. I think I think that having medics in the ER is great. Because if you have medics in the ER, like there are things that you've already been exposed to when you're out in the rig and you're fucking out there in the town taking care of people. You know what I mean? So having you in the ER, you know, you recognize those things super fast. You know, versus having a brand new person in there. So, I, Kate, if you're asking me if you think you're going to end up in the ER, ma'am, I think you you will have not one problem getting there. I have struggled to pass my boards and I just want to quit. Hey, 
Why? Why do you want to quit? I'm trying. I tried not to give you my reflective answer because I was about to like word vomit to you. Right. Yeah. Constructive criticism. There you go. Uh, it says, I know I need to be confident and stop stressing. So here's the thing I need. Shelby, here's something I want for you to do. I want for you to li- I don't care where you're doing it. This is a, sp- a space by yourself. Like if you're if you have an office, if you're in your car, if you're on the toilet, whatever, in the shower, singing Taylor Swift, whatever. I feel like you sing Taylor Swift. OK, I just need for you to say it out loud that I will pass this exam. Say it. Just say it out loud. You don't got to yell it. You ain't got to scream it. Just say, I will pass my exam. I will be a nurse. Like put those things out into existence and then watch how well it helps. Watch how well it helps with your psyche. Okay. Uh, It says, Kevin, the goat, you better, you better act like, you know, Hey, you better let them know. It says, Candy says, because I have tested so many times I am over, I am overthinking and I tend to add things to the test. Candace, I don't know if you know my story, but let me tell you that I failed my NCLEX three times. So if you're telling me that you failed your NCLEX, how many times you say you failed? How many times you said uh, you're struggling? How many times have you taken your NCLEX, Candice? And then I'll, I'll keep going on. It says the ER I work at utilizes us the same scope minus the heparin and insulin. I help. Uh, it helps you guys. It helps you guys out more too. Absolutely. And you're you having that scope. So now I've been in situations where I worked in military hospitals where corpsmen can do drugs and we can hang and we can hang drips under the under the guidance of the RN if they allow for you to do so. And it does help out a ton. Now, that's on a case by case basis. You know what I mean? It's a case by case basis. And you have to, and, and that's a real finicky line that they're drawing. A real finicky line. Kate. Okay. So as I think some uh some try to take they do. Kate, oh, co- oh you know they try to take advantage. It says yep agree, never give up. Yes, I'm gonna do that. I love <laughs> Shelby. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Stop it, girl. So Hey, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad I want you to try that and I want you to come back and I want you to let me know how that works for you. It says no one ever asks how many times you take the you're right. They never they never they never ask you how many times they take it. Candace. OK, so you've taken it five times. I've taken it three. Oh, I've taken it four and I have failed it three times. No one gives a shit. No one cares, Candace, that you failed your exam. You care. But no one else cares. So here's what I'm going to tell you. And you're not going to like this first portion of this answer. That I'm going to tell you. But you failing is your fault. Dramatic pause. However, instead of holding on to the reasons why you failed, let's figure out the reasons why you failed. Right? You telling me that you're an overthinker. Okay, I could literally, if I wanted to, we could be like NCIS and we could follow the trends backwards. And let's think about what Candace was thinking about when she was studying. What's your environment? What's your environment looking like? What is, you know, like, do you have a a weird, funky relationship? Do you have kids? You know, I have kids, a FTK. I'm just playing. But um, like, like, what's your home life like? Do you have a good support system? What do you truly not understand? Do you really study? Do you take naps? Do you sit there and like, do you have time for yourself? What does your time management look like? That's a bit. So I just want to let y'all know anytime anybody comes and does coaching with me, it doesn't matter if you do, NCLEX, especially if you do NCLEX coaching, the first thing I do is I give you a time management sheet and you are required. And like, it is not, it is not an option. Like, I don't like when you come to coach with me, you don't like, this is a dictatorship. It's not, it's not a democracy. You have no option, but to fill it out because I need to see what you are doing every day. And I'm going to be like, all right, cool. You know, I'm like, hey, you, you can get four. I saw you could get four hours back right here. You know what I mean? It's stuff like that. What's your time management look like? What's your accountability look like? What's your job look like? What are all these things that you have going on? You know what I mean? Until we can figure that out. Then you can develop a game plan. It's kind of like going back, going back to the drawing board, erasing the whole thing and let us figure out what's going on. OK, Melissa says I have capping and gowning on, or capping and pinning. Shout out to you, Miss Melissa. Um, no one will ever care. Uh, Tina says I've been at EMT going into accelerated BSN program, feeling good because of what the medics taught me. Absolutely. I felt really good going into the RM program when I as a hospital corpsman because doing the hands on stuff was easy. Doing the assessment stuff was easy. It's just the fucking exam that really screwed me is because all of the damn corporate knowledge that I got when I was out there, you know, working. It says, um, we can do so much in the military. They show you one. 
uh, they see you do one, boom, <laughs> there's your new skill. Yep, exactly. Uh, it matters how good your skills are. Uh, not so much your skill. Tech. Yeah, absolutely. 100. I, I'm coming to you once uh, I have my ma'am. You already know where to find me. You are Kate. You already know what the deal is. We've, we've, we've already had this conversation. You already know I got you. It says my instructor used phrases like hit it and quit it. That's a good phrase. Uh, and read the question and pick up the instinctual answers for you. Yep. And I always tell you, hey, RTFQ, read the fucking question. Read it. Uh, if you can learn to only use what you're given in the question, you'll move You'll move on up. That's true. And the thing about it is like when you start to overthink, like what if? No, 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 no. There is no what if. I like to think of it as like military boards. They're going to ask you a specific question. You give them no more. You give them no less. You give them exactly what they're asking for. Don't overthink. They're going to everything that they're going to give you on NCLEX is it's, it's these are very well researched questions. That they're giving to you. It says, I've gone from the library to home. Support system is great. Uh, I'm the worst at studying. Okay, so you don't have a, so essentially you don't have what I like to call a tactical plan in order for you to conquer the exam. And that's fair. And most people don't have that. It says, I need, exactly, you need a good process. It says, I work in the medical field, which I think has caused issues. It has. Real world versus book world. Exactly. Exactly. Brenda, you passed your NCLEX. Hey, everybody, y'all know what to do right now. Y'all know what to do right now. Give Brenda her love. Give Brenda her love. Give Brenda, Brenda her flowers. Congratulations, Blen, Blenda. Oh, my God. Congratulations, Brenda, on passing your NCLEX. What did you use to pass? Did this play, Did this live help? What's one piece of advice that you could give to everybody that is embarking on this journey? And the NCLEX is set in the perfect world. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Hey, go, Brenda. Hey, I'm going to hang out here for, on, for another four minutes, y'all, and then I got to get off. All right. What other questions do you guys have? But shout out to you, Brenda. We've had, I think, two or three people come in here, two or three people to tell us that they pass NCLEX. Um, I thought Re was it Remac was still discussing this. What are you talking about? Remac what? Sergio. All right. Uh, was it Nurse Jen Fish? I appreciate you. Thank you for the follow. Scroll up. Wait, where am I scrolling up? It says something about Remac. Oh, uh, so fun fact. Oh, NREMT is getting rid of the psychomotor hands-on portion. Um, I think it's bad to do. I got you. I use Archer, Marquet, and Simple Nursing. Okay, I like Archer. I love Marquet. Uh, are you going for your master's in education? Yes, Chloe, I am. It says, uh, what do you suggest to do prior to starting nursing school to get ready? Um, I would most definitely have a conversation if you have a family to let them know that that ass belongs to school. That's number one. Number two, be ready to get humbled. Number three, put yourself on a, you literally need to be regimented with your time. You need to be regimented. Listen to what I'm saying. You need to be regimented with your time. You need to, I don't care if you, if you have kids and you're like, oh, I dedicated an hour to my babies. I love you. Mm. Kiss them. Good night. Go away. And then it's on to study and you have to regiment your time because I'm telling you right now, they're going to, it's going to be sensory overload. Sensory overload. So that's what I would tell you. The biggest thing is to get, get ready for, with your time management. Okay. So if it says give amiodarone or contact the provider, what would be the med to give? It shall be. It depends on, it depends on the question. A nursing school uh, went to a program and left humble. I bet. I bet. What's the best program to study from? What do you mean? Candace, what's the best program to study from what? Like for NCLEX, it depends on you. Also, everybody says like, hey, what's the best program? You know how many, I spent a total of $3,000 on different programs and with the Board of Nursing and with Pearson View on different programs. And the one that worked well for me personally was Kaplan. Now, I have a program that's $97 that you get for a lifetime as well as I do coaching and I do and I do mentoring and I do tutoring to also help as well. Um, what's the best program? It says, no, no, I said something before that. Oh, I didn't see it, Shelby. Hold on. Um, I saw something that said, read the NCLEX. Someone, I said, I saw something that said, read the NCLEX answers as if they were already ordered. Yes. So when you're on NCLEX, you have the order, you have the people, you have the hands, you have everything that you need. Right. So you assume that you already have the order. It says, yes, NCLEX. Uh, I've done Remar review, Mark Clinic multiple times. Candace, once again, like I said, this to somebody else who said they failed 11 times. Maybe. 
maybe you need one on maybe you need guidance. Like maybe you need one on one help. Miss Barbara, you're back. Hey. I just want to let y'all know Miss Barbara was one of the people who told me that I need to go back to school. <laughs> she was one that told me to go back to school. Candace, I'll just be I'll be I'll be completely honest with you. I, I think that and yes, NCLEX, it is utopia. It is not real. I mean it is. The scenarios are real, but it is very perfect world. But Candace, I would recommend that you get a mentor, you get a coach, you get a guide, somebody who is literally going to get all of the fu- anybody can go on YouTube to find an answer. But the thing about YouTube is that it's information overload. And that's what I try to tell people. Right. Um, I would recommend you getting a mentor and a coach. I do that. That links in my bio. You can check that out. Right. And if you have any questions about that after you've gone to the website or whatever, you could just shoot me a DM and then we could talk about that. And that goes for anybody as well. Um, so I understand what it's like to go through and you're just like, damn, dude, like because you want to know why I, I, I got a mentor. I ended up getting a mentor and that's how I was able to conquer. Right. Because you got to remember this NCLEX is not about passing y'all. It's about conquering. Think about the journey that it took for you to get from point A to point B to point C to point D. Right. It's not just like, hey, here's a book. Go read it. Go take the exam. But like, does this look like a, a, a you know, a, a food server's certification? Like this is this is not that. You know, you, you, you know, think about it like medieval times. If people wanted to go conquer somebody else's land, their their asses got to go from point. Think about a Game of Thrones style minus the Red Wedding because that hurt my heart. Right. So think about it like that. That may be something that you need. You know what I mean? Uh, So if it says give Amy or call the doctor in the situation, uh, you need Amy. Would you give it Um, if the yeah, you assume that the order is there. Right. And it's but it all it all depends like. It depends on what the question is asking you. Find resources that explain the why. Yep. And uh, what you're doing. Candace, you're welcome. Yes, it's overwhelming information on YouTube for sure. Uh, you guys need to invest in Kevin. I've been in RN since 2007 and I love his content and his insight. Barbara, thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, I, I, like I'm trying to tell you, all Barbara is the one who told me I need to go back to school. So I'm just like, fine, whatever. Um, But yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it for tonight. Uh. First of all, y'all got me to 37,000 likes. Y'all got me to a thousand people up in here listening to me run my mouth. And that was awesome. Tomorrow, I might be on tomorrow because I have reserve duty. So I'll be in my uniform looking all spiffy and, you know, whatever, if you guys want to come and hang out with me. Um, so um, last little plug. Um, if you guys are looking for um, if you guys are looking for a review, check out the seven day NCLEX course. That link is in my bio. Also, there's a freebie over there. 42 pages worth of, you know, tips to help you to conquer the NCLEX. Everything from, you know, trigger words to, you know, knowing what, the, remembering what your lab values are. Jason Derulo, I mean, Brenda, you want me to sing to you? Girl, you passed your NCLEX. Mm. All right, I'm done. No more. See, you made me just embarrass myself for you. You're welcome. Only because you passed your NCLEX, you know what I'm saying? Um, tomorrow, what time? I don't even know what time I might not even do it because it's a Saturday and I have drill and I'll be doing military stuff and I usually don't even like doing it, but we'll see. And if I did, it'll probably be sometime in the evening time when I get home. Um, but yeah, check out those courses. Hey, if you need coaching, it says, I'll send you some freebies if you want to post them. Hey, Kate, I got you. I got you. Um, and if you need coaching, if you need mentorship, if you need guidance, I offer that. You guys can check that out. Those links are in my bio. And here's something I want I want y'all to realize. Most people, and I mean most people will go and buy stuff that doesn't that is not that worth not shit to them. But the moment you tell somebody to invest, invest in themselves on their personal growth on whatever, they 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 give you the heebie-jeebies. Like they they're just like, "No, well, So think about it like this. You getting your license is your way to freedom. You getting your license is a way to freedom. So I'm going to ask you this. How much does your freedom cost? How much are you willing to invest to become free? You see what I'm saying? So let that sink in. Check out those links in my bio. And lastly, for the weekend, I want everybody to be safe. I want everybody to be, be, be back here on Monday so we can go through these questions. We're going towards the latter end of the year. Um, 
So I know people are going to, you know, be on break and stuff like that. But NCLEX studying does not stop. I'm learning to invest in myself. I put off becoming an RN too. That's what I'm talking about. You ha- don't look at something. Don't look at something as in like, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm spending my money on this. Do your fucking research and invest in yourself. Invest in yourself. I invested with Kevin because I'm invested in myself and passing and I'm not even. A ner- That's what I'm. Da- Tina, and Tina and Tina messaged me and was just like, yo, like there's so much in there. For the price that it's in there, if you're talking about the course, I remember that. So I'm just saying, y'all, understand the true meaning of investing in yourself. Stop giving your money to Tory Burch or or Mercedes or fucking uh, whatever frou frou ass shit that people like to do. You know what I'm saying? Stop giving temporarily. Stop giving your money to something that brings you no value and invest in yourself. Doesn't it? Now I'm not even talking about me. I'm talking about in all aspects. My freedom is priceless and invaluable. That's what I'm saying. So why wouldn't why would one not continue to invest to keep their freedom, which is priceless and invaluable? You know what I mean? So anyways, like I said, I hope everybody has a really great weekend. I want everybody to be safe. I want everybody to come back here on Monday. Don't drink and drive. Don't try to be out there like some other folks out there. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go out there and party because they passed their fucking ATI. Right. So uh, be good. Be great. Be kind to yourself. You only got one of you. Um, so take care of you so you can go out there and take care of other folks. Uh, And I'm not just talking about bedside. You can do that. You can take care of people and not directly take care of people, if you know what I'm saying. So, ladies and gentlemen, until Monday, maybe tomorrow, I haven't decided, but until Monday, I will see everybody on the next stream. Peace.